Oops, I always do this. I start playing the music and then I immediately close the tab. Sorry for the, the volume. I really, really want to put aside like a few hours, go through like every jazz song on the, uh, what's it called? On like this royalty free jazz site and just download all of them so I can shuffle. Because having it in the same order every time is starting to kill me. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, I gotta get Mr. Money Man in here. <clears throat> we gotta go in the squad voice channel. I guess it's called Sequester now. I'm in VC. My throat, <clears throat> not cooperating just yet, but that's okay. I'm sure it'll, it'll come around. Uh, I'll throw out a tweet, like a professional streamer. Something like my index finger feels like um, tingly right now. Makes me a little uncomfortable. Okay. <clears throat> you can feel the dollar bills in your grip already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, nice disclaimer. Very clever. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, how, how, how should I describe you? Because for my tweet, I don't want to just write like Mr. Nick Stan Ball. <laughs> Man with financial literacy degree. Uh... <clears throat> With so money man, amazing. I, I have a uh, Bachelor of Science in Business Management with a specialization in finance from Central Washington University uh, College of Business, which is internationally accredited, which only 5% of colleges in the world well, have. You, re you recognize I've got like 300 characters, right? Smart money man talks money. Okay. <laughs> with, with, I don't know. With like, a smart how, how do you fit man that into 300 who talks characters? money? Good. <laughs> I mean, that's good enough to me. Good, presumably rich friend talks <laughs> about money. <laughs> <clears throat> Guys, I was I first. Think, Absolutely not. I, I do think it's kind of important to talk about my qualifications. So oh it's yeah. Like, oh yeah. Well, we'll do that once we have people possibly here. Possibly know what I'm talking about. Right. Here. You know, we don't want you know snake oil merchant. You know, I've watched, rewatched your interview like four times for the for the editing, editing project, and I still don't remember the names of the two people that you brought up. <laughs> I remember Mad Money. One of them had uh, Ramsey. Don't tell me. It's not Gordon, obviously. No, his name starts with a D. I'll give you D that hint. Dave. Yes, correct. Let's go. Let's go. Dave let's go. <clears throat> um, other Money Man. He was absolutely insane. This is the one that was insane, or Dave Ramsey was insane? Sell, 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 sell. Buy, 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 buy. <laughs> that doesn't help me. I don't know. It just kind of put some pressure on me. <laughs> Jim Cramer. <laughs> that's with Mad right. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How could I forget Jim Cramer? Yeah, after sending you those clips of the lightning round where he's just smacking buttons, raving like a madman about stocks nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> Okay, so um, going back over my qualifications real quick. Uh, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Specialization wait, in hold Finance. Wait, Before we go into this, let's wait for the bot to actually ping people. Okay. How long does it take for the bot to I ping I don't know, people? man. So it used to be like two minutes. Sometimes it was like ten. Either way, it will, uh, we'll wait for a bit. All right. Bro, so while we wait, do you want to do you want to reconnect to Discord because you're a little scratchy? Really? Yeah, you're scratchy to me. So it's like uh, the old static? Because <laughs> you said yes, didn't have to, didn't have to mock me. Discord. Hello. Much better. Okay. Oh, so much better. I, that's weird. I actually thought I fixed that issue completely, but I suppose not. That's all right. Yeah. Well, I probably it's just something to do with the way that uh, Discord <clears> handles <throat> first connection. What are you doing here, Foss? Why are you here? You could be watching Agent versus Carver. I kind of wish I was, to be honest. I forgot that was happening. What? I... Okay, so you just... Hey, what did you talk about money? Oh, just kidding. I need to watch that game. <laughs> I mean, I'm here, aren't I? Yeah, you are. I made the decision, but I do love me some duel. I won't lie. <clears throat> do you enjoy watching it about as much as you enjoy watching Melee? 
I I think I enjoy watching it more because I can I can relate more to like the skill that's happening. You know, like when you watch a good pen spin, or like some someone who's not into pen spinning probably can't tell the difference between me and like someone who's been doing it a lot for the past like 15 years. But like I can tell the difference. They're like 20 times better than me. And I feel like my lack of actually playing melee makes it harder for me to appreciate the skill um, outside of just being like a spectator. <laughs> but for, for Diabolical Duel, I mean, I haven't played that much of it, I suppose, but I understand it a bit better because I've tried to understand it better. <laughs> and it's just kind of like you, you don't you just hear this <clears throat> controller clicking. And you're like, wow, I wish my hands could do that. Well, I, I do understand like some of melee because i have watched it a lot but like if someone told me to break down everything that's happening in a sequence of like you know tech skill i probably could only do like half of it hmm. yeah hold on are, are you are you in game me yeah okay check out our levels dude this is crazy yo i can't believe you're still not one are you seeing this we're, we're yeah, on we're fire. on fire. Because, yeah, because we uh, we got the game before the other people got the game. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. So there's like a they they did a special thing for selling a million copies, and the people oh. that uh, bought before the million, they were like, "We'll give you a flaming level icon." Let's freaking go. Yeah, it's I'm... pretty neat. Let's everyone know that you're an OG elite gamer. I thought it was for like you know being cool and beating nightmare mode or something. Uh, they'll probably add that later. <clears throat> For like Has the, the ten bot seconds that everyone you're... yet. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, because I have not yet been pinged. Oh boy, that's fine. We'll give it some time. Hello, everyone in chat. Never bought this game. Only library share because I played for fifty hours and stopped. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's it's most fun for me in multiplayer for sure. You want spoilers on the Agent Carver game? No, I'm gonna watch it later. Level 50-ish? Hmm, I've played this game quite a bit. It, it's a really fun game for me to like force people to play with me. <laughs> Are we gonna do Elite or Nightmare? Yes, yes. Do you want to think? You want to do an Elite run first? Because we'll be playing for a while. We'll save the Nightmare one for later. Okay, sure. What's this game about? It's a roguelite FPS. Um, yeah. <laughs> you think? Uh, think Binding of Isaac plus. What's what's another FPS? Borderlands? Apex Borderlands? Legends. I think that's a good example. <laughs> I think Borderlands Legends. is probably the closest comparison. Yeah. It also happens <clears throat> to be the only game that Pingu and I ever play together these days. Gunfire? Yeah. How's I heard that Zilva uninstalled Skyforge. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He couldn't juggle two MMOs. He had to play Grand Blue as well. That's so sad. What is Grand Blue? Is it gotcha? Uh, it's like half gotcha. Oof, oof, it's like three-quarter gotcha. It's like 95% gotcha. <laughs> is, is it, um, what was I going to say? Is it like Genshin Impact? That style of gotcha? Where there's actual gameplay? There's, there's more to Genshin than there is to Grand Blue. That's so sad. Yeah, but he won't play Genshin because the rates are so bad. So what are you guys doing in Skyforge these days? It's pretty much just me and Broken at this point. Oh, um, that's so there's, sad. Yeah, there's... There's a couple people in the community that play the game, and we just like we log in, we do some shit. We're in that sort of late BNS era malaise that we yeah. get into, where we just run content. Mm -hmm. uh, um, is broken and broken I are like obsessed much about the game or no? Obsessed? I don't think so. Okay. Is I mean, he has more hours than me, but him and I definitely have the problem of like when we get into a game like an MMO, we play it for like ten hours a day at a time. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, let's see, he's got 327 hours, I have 260 hours. Okay, okay, that's actually But I'm a little, one. I happen to be a little bit further in the progression, there, oh. which I think is hilarious. How's that possible? Did he, like, well, he's I'm more of, like, a completionist. Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, I think a lot of it is that, um, Broken is just, like, trying a bunch of shit and figuring out what's good, what's not, doing a lot of research, and then just having the launcher up AFK in the background. Right. Okay, so I do want to talk about... Uh, you know, let's just get in-game. Forget all yeah, this. The, I, I don't think the bot is ever going to catch up here. We'll wait for your credentials until the bot does catch up, but well, we can just play instead of sitting on the menu. Okay. Um, 
Because we do have people watching. Right, I don't right. think they just want to stare at the menu forever. <laughs> so did did you hear about that Riot is making an MMO? I did hear about that, but I have no idea Imagine what the details giving are going to be. Money. I'm very interested, but I hope that they try and treat it as a... What the... There's a ping now. Did, did the bot just it ping? It ping, yeah. Uh, How does that... It knew. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you very much, Vapor. I appreciate you. Yo, have you tried the new shotgun, the Hell? Yes, I have. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of interesting. I'm I enjoy lukewarm it on it, though. I think it's very satisfying, even though it's like probably not the best weapon in the game. Oh, Elements! Good to see you again. Good gamer element. All right. Uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, let's, let's talk about the Riot MO a little bit. So I, I was told of it by by third. Uh, and what is happening? I'm already dying. Uh, sorry. That doesn't sound like my problem. <laughs> and when he brought it up, he's like, are you going to play it or not? And I said, you know, I kind of trust Riot to make a combat system that's not like just World of Warcraft 10.0, 10 you know? Yeah. I, I think I Actually, I think what says a lot about Riot's development capability uh, and how it's improved since League of Legends first launch is that they uh, released Wild Rift on mobile devices, and it actually is like a super polished League of Legends experience. Wild Rift? Yeah, so it's like League of Legends, but it's slimmed down a little bit from mobile devices. <laughs> it's It mobile runs really League. well. It's That's very crazy. efficient. It's tight. Um, so it's like there's a ton of optimization on the back end that they can do when building something from scratch. So I feel like in the optimization aspect of designing a game They're, we're not going to run into another blade and soul 2 where the gpu is just not used at all isn't that crazy and they use like single cpu cores ridiculous yeah, like one core and you have to use an external program in order to get it to use more <laughs> it's so bad how does yeah. that happen especially when like so many processors these days are like we need to add more cores just because there's more stuff going on at one time hmm Anyways, I think I'll take this. Um, I'm hopeful about Riot's uh, direction with the MMO because I feel like they already have a massive moneymaker with League of Legends. I don't think that they're going to try and recreate that success because oh, they kind of know that they don't Give really have a, a good good shot at doing that. Um. The conversation that I had with Third was, do you think they're going to go pay to win? Like, that's the typical no. thing that happens with uh, MMOs. I definitely do not think they're going to do pay to win. I think it's going to be, I think they're going to focus more on uh, good cosmetics to sell the game. Right. Because, I mean, look at League of Legends. That's literally the only thing that there is. Yeah, okay. People, so he... people shell out so much money for skins. Like, what the heck? That was a third's argument as well, is that like, you know, look at all the other games that Riot has released, like do any of those have pay to win, but like those aren't really the standard for, for the industry. Like if, if you had pay to win in League of Legends, that people would be rioting in the streets because it's just like, you know, it's a PvP. <laughs> rioting. It's a PvP competitive game. So, you know, it's, it's really, really not okay in that market. But MMOs, people accept, you know, a little pay to progress, never hurt anyone. And you, you know, like to the extent that people to this day will probably say that uh, Blade and Soul is still not pay to win because you can technically oh, totally. still get everything in the you game. You can just not and take five years. Exactly, exactly. You can get everything in the game if you play the game for 10 hours a day for like a year. <laughs> there actually was a guy in Kill Lindy that like made Blade and Soul his full time job. And he just has a ton of puppets that he goes into raids with and collects money and then just hoards it and then funnels it all into his main. He so, actually has like max gear without spending a dime. That's crazy. Yeah, I respect that so much, but like, also, come like, on, man. Just get a regular job and then buy your gear. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's better use go, of time. Go pick up a shift at McDonald's. You'll be just fine. <laughs> Actually, his parents would not uh, let him get a job, so that's oh. kind of why he had all the time to do that. Wow. So he's, yeah. he's a he's, younger person? Yeah, he's that's like, cool then, he graduated actually. early. He graduated high school at like 15. Oh, he's not that young. <laughs> yeah, so. Wait, 15? I, I just realized that's pretty 
surprising. Yeah, that's very young. Like How? 17, 18 is when most people will graduate high school. But he graduated quite early, started university. And he's staying on top of his schoolwork and is doing fine. And it's just like he's got all this time on his hands because his parents won't really let him do anything else. Why? Because they're very classic Vietnamese Asian parents ah. that are like, you You need to go to school, you need to focus on school, and you need to do well in school. Mm. And that's how you'll succeed in life. And let me tell you right now, that ain't even remotely true. Okay, well, this this brings us quite nicely into the topic that we have today. Uh, well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so n now you can go through your credentials of, of why you feel like you're qualified to talk about money. And yeah. more like investment is what we were planning on talking about today. Well, money in general, too. Okay, so, okay. Um, I graduated from Central Washington University College of Business, uh, magna cum laude, with a, a Bachelor of Science in Business Management and a specialization in Finance. Now, the CWU, Central Washington University College of Business, is internationally accredited, and there's only like 5% of universities in the world that have this accreditation for colleges of businesses. Um, so I, I kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about, maybe, I think. <laughs> um, I also do have done a lot of research in my own time um, about, oh, what the heck, uh, about different financial topics to try and understand more about it. Because the idea to me that after however many years that the markets have been functioning and all the technology that we have available to us. We still are unable to uh, come up with a formula to describe market movements is so crazy. So it's like, why, how, who, <laughs> when, if, um, so there's a lot of things that I've dug into on my own time. There's a lot of things that I've been introduced to. Oh, there's nothing else here. Introduced to, uh, through my education and there's a lot of personal experience that I have dealing with uh, business and money uh, from working with a small business that deals with very rich people. So I'm around large numbers a lot. So I'm very comfortable, very familiar with uh, how they all kind of work and play together. Mm -hmm. Is that it for your credentials list? I'm also memed as a smart money man in my friend group, so <laughs> obvious. That, that's the real credential. Yeah, that's that, the that's real. That's how you're known, and in, in my Discord server is guy who knows about money. <laughs> yeah. But but the Where's reason my Discord role for money man, anyways. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say. Okay, the the reason that I, or rather, what I wanted to talk to you today about was, I know that in the past a few people have come to you and said like, hey. How do I get started with investment? How do I, you know, make money kind of like passively from, from doing this kind of like investment or like buying and selling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and well, I mean, we'll get into the, I, actually, I guess you might as, ask, might as well ask me like what kind of investment I want to do. Cause you started asking me like profiling questions yesterday. And uh, I'm like, you know what? We can just save <laughs> this for say it like that. You asked me profiling <laughs> questions. <laughs> like a TSA agent that dragged you aside at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Any reason you're going to Afghanistan today? <laughs> oh man! Oh shit! I misclicked. Is he good? I didn't even have any it's normal inscriptions. I literally just wasted money. Unlucky. Oh. <laughs> Unlucky. I'm gonna say I did too, but my inscription was actually good. Oh. So um, yeah. I mean, a lot of it kind of comes down to managing expectations, like what kind of passive income do you want to get because if you take more risk you can get more out of it um you could also be more involved and get more out of it than just being truly passive set and forget it mm. uh it also depends on how much money you have to start with because you your options are pretty limited if you only have a few hundred dollars right right so uh the biggest thing is do you have Greater than or less than two thousand dollars to invest. Okay, I, I have more than two thousand dollars. Okay, so that means that you have access to uh, margin in a brokerage account. Uh, so 
at most brokerages, you can be what is generally considered fully funded, and you have. Uh, can you explain these terms? <laughs> <laughs> okay, where, we, we where do I go from? To? Okay, what is a brokerage account? A brokerage account is oh, what the fuck? a brokerage account is uh, an account with a registered broker with FINRA, the Industry Regulatory Authority, that will. Um, act as an intermediary for you to deal with the stock market. Okay, okay. So, so it's when a guy you, I talk so, to when I want to yeah, do so, stuff with stocks. Yeah, it's companies like uh, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, okay, Robin okay. Hood. These are names I've heard of. Yeah. So all those guys are brokers, and they have brokerage accounts that you can use for your brokerage. Gotcha, account. gotcha. Uh, and basically the way it works is you don't really interact with anyone else directly in the market. Um, what happens is you tell your broker, hey, I'm going to buy this security. And they're going to be like, okay, do you want to just buy it at whatever price you can get right now? Or do you have a specific price in mind? And you say one or the other. And they're like, okay, we're going to go find someone that's willing to sell this thing to you. And as soon as we can work out a deal, we'll credit that security to your account and then that's what happens okay okay that makes sense to me yeah so um believe it or not the even though there's like all this technology behind uh the way that all the different brokers operate there's still a lot of very significant differences in how these orders are routed so what broker you choose, even aside from their pricing model, does kind of matter. Hmm. So, um, like, even just putting the routing aside, brokers, different brokers are more competent at some things than others. Like, if you just want a low-cost introduction to doing stuff, buying and selling stocks, and then maybe working with options, Robinhood is probably the way to go because they don't charge you anything. Okay. Their, their routing is absolutely awful so they're very bad at actually um coming up with good prices for you to get your orders filled at they're very lazy about it and they're just going to be like yeah so you wanted to buy uh 100 shares of coca-cola um market price is somewhere between 52 dollars and 60 cents and 52 dollars and 65 cents we'll fill you at $52.64, and then we'll keep the other four cents for ourselves. <laughs> That's kind of how they do it. Uh, then there's other brokerages like uh, Fidelity that are like, hey, you already pay us a commission, so we're just going to fill you at the best price that we can get. And then there's some places like uh, boutique brokerages that you probably have never heard of, like Tastyworks. Correct. I've never heard of that in my life. It, yeah. And they're kind of like, all right, so you pay us a commission, and what we're going to do is we're going to fill you at the best price that there can possibly be, and we're even going to... Ooh, what? Um, I'm 1HP. Oh, oh sorry. wow. He hit me with a freaking teleport. No, I'm dead. <laughs> Where's my man to clean up the ads for me? Hey, that's not my job. Absolutely My job is. is to talk about funny money, all right? Okay, we won. All right. Thank um, you, Mr. Money Man. Continue. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, different brokerages do have different features. They have different ways that they prioritize your order. So, it does actually kind of matter. Okay, okay. Um, so, what level of involvement are you looking for with your money? I, I would do like... you want to, like, look at it every day? You're kind of cool with looking at your values going up and down? You just want to put it somewhere, not think about it, and then look yeah, at it later and yeah, be like, yeah. that's more than I thought. Exactly. So uh, the way that Soxar put it was like, I want to put money somewhere, I want to forget about it, and then I want to look later and notice I have more money. That's that's okay. the ideal, but I do want to talk about the other types too, so, so I can get like a basic understanding of like what my options are. Okay. So what I'm going to say right now is I'm going to suggest Fidelity to you because they do have a very wide range of uh, mutual funds that they manage that are tailored for just passive growth. And depending on the level of risk that you want to uh, subject your funds to, um, you can get 
more or less return. So what I suggested to Soxar is because he wanted a relatively low level of risk, but he didn't want to compromise too much on his potential returns, mm -hmm. is I pointed it him to a high yield bond fund where basically it's just uh junk bonds which are uh, a portfolio of bonds that are rated kind of low uh there's not a whole lot of confidence in the companies that have uh taken out these i'm gonna ask you a question debts. that may upset you all right what is a bond a bond is an agreement to pay uh back an amount of money that is borrowed Okay. It is not the same as a, a typical term loan, like when you take money out from your bank and then you have to pay it back and then there's interest mm -hmm. every month. Right, but right, they right. front load the interest, so it's a fucking racket. Um, bonds are specifically structured so that only interest is paid for the duration of the bond. And then once the bond reaches maturity, when it expires at the end of its life, then the principal is paid back along with the last interest payment. Okay. So it's a little bit different. Uh, bonds are the primary way that uh, companies will raise money in debt markets, where they'll go get, uh, they'll go to a, an underwriter, some company that's like, hey, we can make money out of nowhere. And then they're like, hey, I need some money out of nowhere. And they're like, all right, here's your money. And then they sell the rights to that cash flow of interest payments to someone else. And the market in which that transaction takes place is the debt market. Okay. Basically. Okay. But from my uh, end, I basically buy a bond and then don't think about it. And then once the time has expired or elapsed, then I am paid back a higher amount. Correct. Okay. So over time, you gain some money based on... I'm getting beat up. <laughs> um, I'm going to die. Don't die. Um, over time, you do receive some income based on the... Uh, <laughs> crawl, crawl, crawl. Other way. Based on the... Uh, Where you go? Oh, you're going to the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and get to the end. Actually, why don't you just press F on me and tank a boulder? If it pushes me, though. I'm going to die. Okay, I'm going to we'll, die. We'll just don't don't get pushed. Oh, no. Just res. Just res. You madman. You must res. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, while you're waiting for this bond to mature, uh, you do receive periodic interest payments. Like every month you get a small amount of money. But bonds are basically traded in $1,000 face value increments. So if you have $10,000 to invest, you can buy 10 bonds. And if they're all an average coupon interest payment of three and a quarter percent we'll say that's per year so Fuck. let me bust out the calculator okay point oh three two five divided by 12 approximately oh oh two seven uh times ten thousand that's 27 buccarinos a month by socking away ten thousand dollars that so, to me is not very much so that's how much you get a month by just like Putting down a thousand dollars, ten thousand, not oh, sorry, one thousand, yeah, ten thousand. It's ten bonds. So ten you bonds do... you get twenty-seven dollars a month. Correct. Okay, yes, that's but pretty bad. Truly, so here's why you may consider that though. Okay. It is truly passive. You don't have to do fucking anything. Right. You tell Fidelity, give me these bonds. They give you the bonds, and then you do nothing. Okay. There is very little risk to your principal. So, um. The initial amount that you invest, the ten thousand dollars, is there's not a whole lot of risk to it because the bonds are always going to get paid off first in the event that a company defaults. What does that mean? The portfolio of bonds is also diversified, so the likelihood that every company that has outstanding debt within that portfolio just goes belly up is very low. Okay. So, so your risk is pretty minimal in there. So, what exactly do you mean by if the company defaults? Yes, if the company goes out of business, they default on their... I've died again. Uh, defaults on their debt, like they can't pay it, they refuse to pay it. Um, then it's like, okay, so are you even solvent? Are you a company anymore? Can we trust you to carry out business transactions like you kind of said you would when you were formed? Mm. And if the answer is no, then it's like, all right, you're you're bankrupt, you're a sham, and... You've died again. How do I do this? You're a sham. 
Uh, and we need to figure some some way to get the money that we gave you out because clearly you're not doing what you said you were going to do with our money. Mm. So that's when bankruptcy proceedings start and lawyers get involved. Okay. And, uh, basically, the shareholders are the very last to get paid in a, a situation like that. Oh, really? The, yeah, the first people to get paid are the lawyers. Actually, no. The first people to get paid are the CEOs that have golden parachutes. The second people to get paid are lawyers. Where are you? I'm scared and alone. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> oh, no. It's an elite. We're going to die. The very last people to get paid are the shareholders. People that bought shares of stock, gave their money to the company. If you own shares of the company, if you own equity, the chances are you're not getting much of anything. Hmm. you might get a few dollars back. So you have a much higher risk of total loss if you just buy equity. But I assume this is a pretty rare scenario, though. It's pretty rare, but uh, within your life, it has happened that a large publicly traded company... I'm, die. I'm not doing any damage. Uh, a large playing. publicly traded company uh, just disappeared. Okay. They, they, they kind of went to zero. But this Bear has happened Stearns. once. No, it's happened a few times. Okay. Bear Stearns. Uh, do you remember those guys? I do not. Maybe you've heard them before? I, I have not. All right. Press press 1 in chat if you've heard of Bear Stearns. Press 2 if not, so I don't feel as bad. Maybe you were just a, a wee lad I may have at been the time a fetus, of the 2008 yeah. financial crisis. Oh, no. <laughs> 2? Okay, thank, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, boys. Wow. Either I'm a boomer or everyone here is a zoomer. I think like most people are pretty pretty negligent of financial ongoings and markets you know yeah and like bear stearns hasn't been around for a very long time so it's like who fucking cares mm -hmm. okay so bear stearns was like a uh financial services company uh that existed and was pretty well known uh back in the mid aughts we'll say like 0405 they were making a lot of money off of the housing boom because they could just trade these uh derivative assets these collateralized securities that are basically just bundles of mortgages that have this sort of ladder structure where uh high quality mortgages that are very unlikely to default there's a few of them and they're a lower interest payment but then there's a lot of higher risk mortgages that have higher interest payments that are sort of at the bottom of the pan okay so so and default is a term for like when shit hits the fan yeah, default is a term for, hey, you know how I said I was going to do this? I'm not going to do this. Okay. <laughs> so a any company, any country even can default on their debt. They can be unable or unwilling to pay. And uh, you might remember early on in Donald Trump's presidency, there was talk about the potential of the U.S. defaulting on its debt just because, yeah, we're not going to pay. Why should we pay? We don't respect other countries, so why should we pay on the debt that we owe them? Yikes. Yeah, so it's... The international implications of a extremely large country like the United States of America defaulting on debt and just not paying aside... Uh, default is a very messy thing, and no one really wants to deal with it. And it's especially harmful to people that hold equity. But if you hold debt, you have a good chance of getting back most, if not all, of what you put in. So that mitigation of risk by buying a bond portfolio instead of a stock portfolio is one reason why you may lean that way. Okay. Even if you do only make a whole $27 a month after putting in ten grand. So th this... You, you, if you're talking to someone that's like, okay, I want to make money, but I don't want to think at all. I don't want to have any or the minimal risk. You would say, okay, just buy some bonds. You'll make some amount of money. It's better than nothing. Yeah, because okay. just saying I want some money doesn't define how much money you want. There's, I, I don't know what goals you're trying to hit, what time horizon you have, like how long you're going to need before you need the principal, you know, because your money's okay. locked up as long right, as it's okay. invested. You can't actually pay the bills with shares of stock, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, That's a good point. I mean, without knowing these other things and just speaking in broad general terms, I would probably just recommend a bond fund because it is pretty brainless. Well, what is the time horizon? Like, how long would it take to, to be paid 
out. Or like before your money becomes claimable. Well, the beauty of uh, typical financial markets that uh, brokerage brokers deal with is that it is pretty liquid. You may be assessed a small activity fee if you just like are throwing your money back and forth between different funds in and out of cash. Um, but it takes two days for a transaction to settle in a cash. And then it's however long after that to withdraw the money in your bank account. So maybe a week. Okay. So Which is pretty reasonable. Yeah, 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 for sure. There are other options. Who, who's beating me up? It's, it's Desert Worm. worm. Um, there's other options out there. There's a company called Fundrise, which is sort of like a... I don't know what to think of them. They are in uh, a real estate investment company that uh, basically you give them money. You lock it up for a period of time, like minimum six months, but it depends on how much you put in. Uh, and then they give you return. There's significantly greater return than you would get with you know the fidelity diversified bond portfolio but you still have your money locked up for several months at a time mm -hmm. and if you don't know that you've got an expense coming up like your tire goes flat you have to get your car towed because the engine overheated and blew, blew up or something um your, your water heater goes out and floods your basement where your computer is because you live in your mother's basement. I don't know. But things like that, you know, uh, unexpected expenses. If your most of your money is locked up because you want to try and leverage as much of your net worth as possible to make a little extra, you're not going to be able to pay that bill. Right. And so, so this good. is what? Uh, Fundrise, F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E. Okay. I again don't know what to think of them, so this is a your mileage may vary. Your results are not guaranteed. Investing involves risk. Consult a financial professional, etc. Cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Which, by the way, I would like to expand upon the disclaimer again right now, okay. uh, since I talked about it. I am not a financial professional. Uh, I am just a dude that is talking out my ass about shit that I may or may not know about. Come so on. take everything I say with a grain of salt and consult a financial professional uh, before doing any of this stuff. And I'm not giving anyone a suggestion to buy or sell securities. <laughs> Bege please do not lose $20 and then sue me. We put the disclaimer. You know, it's out there. Yeah. I think yeah, he's definitely underselling point, himself. Disclaimer in the chat. I wish this big so yeah, was uh, Fundrise will give you more than the diversified bond portfolio, but your money's locked up for a little bit longer. <laughs> Fuck, I got slain. Ha -ha. Hold on. The boys are back in town. Be, be advised. Oh, 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 ah! Okay, I'm alive. It's so difficult to talk about money when there's dudes shooting me. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I so slow? The boys gave you a concussion. You've died. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, why? I saved you. Now come save me. Yep, yep. And then we go. All right, let's go. I'm going to go die again. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Why is he sliding? He's really moonwalking into me. <gasps> what the? <laughs> oh, my God. We've been in this room for 10 years, man. They, they don't stop coming. They really don't. <laughs> I saw him coming. I was ready to accept my fate. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, I did not say thank you. You're Don't welcome. solicit thanks just yet. We've done it. We've done it. Oh my okay. goodness. Uh, That's pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, bond fund, low risk, pretty brain dead. You're super not involved, but you make a paltry sum. Twenty-seven dollars, man. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. Yeah, you. I'm thinking you want a little bit more than that. Yeah, I'd be willing to shoulder a little bit of, of risk. Like that. That's that's to the point where like, what? Well, I can buy a few packs of gum a month with that. It's a little, you know. But but anyway. Yeah. So what what's the next next level up from that then? The next level up, I think, would probably be something like a uh, high dividend stock. And dividends are just cash payments made from the company 
two shareholders on a pretty regular basis. Um, Home Depot. Hang on, let me... Finance.yahoo.com. Excellent website, by the way. Uh, Home Depot has a pretty decent dividend. Um, they pay it quarterly, so you get it four times a year. Uh, it's six dollars per year. So this is the topic. So of what dividends. is that? A dollar fifty a quarter. So hey, fucking calculator again. <laughs> He's doing the math. So a dollar fifty over two seventy forty-five is point uh, five five percent per payment. And we multiply that by four because it's four times a year, 2.2%. If we take and divide that by 12 and we try and give ourselves some sort of. Hang on, that ain't shit, right? No, that's 10,000 shares. Oh my god. No, that's. He's listening to me be a fucking idiot on stream. This, this is why we trust you for money and not math. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hang on a second. What's wrong? This is the same thing. <laughs> you let someone else do the math. You just make the decisions. Okay, so at may maybe Home Depot is not the best because that's only 2.2%. So you would actually be making less than with the diversified bond fund. <laughs> so so this is a, okay. a dividend, you said? Yeah, dividend. So it's pretty much guaranteed. The, well, the expectation is that dividends are guaranteed. When a company declares a dividend, they're like, we are going to begin paying a dividend. Shareholders expect that they're going to pay that dividend regularly every quarter until the end of time. And it will go up, but it won't go down. Okay. Okay, Altria Group, M-O, ticker symbol. Uh, these guys sell cigarettes. This is much better. They have a 7.86% yield, yield. So this is going to be more than your diversified bond fund. How much are we talking per per month? Uh, well, let's take a look. Or it, uh, just hang on. No, stop. Clear all. Fuck. <laughs> you can't operate a calculator. Three, four, four, twelve. <laughs> it's hard. Okay. Why is it hard? And how many could you get with ten grand? 278, 228, so 228, 3, 4, 4, divide by 12. That would get you 65 bucks a month. Okay. With 10 grand. And you have the potential for capital appreciation because it is an equity. What does that mean? However, you also have the chance for a capital loss. Which means that the value of the principal, Aye. the the initial value that you put in, is could go up or down. So you have more risk there. With the bond portfolio, it's going to stay pretty much even. Like there's okay. very little fluctuation. But with an actual equity, uh, like a stock, chances are pretty good that your value is going to change. Aside from just you know the dividend you get. He jerked me. He jerked me. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh, never mind. No, you're not. You're, you're full health. What are you talking about? He was about? shooting the fireball at me, man. Wait, didn't these guys all used to disappear once we I killed I thought so, too. I'm like, okay, we just kill this guy, and then they all go away, but I guess not. All right. That's fine. So you can get more return by taking a high dividend stock. Okay. And you still don't have to do much. You just, you buy it, and then you do nothing. Weapon damage minus 50%, but each attack deals the damage twice. I'm taking that. Hold on. I would, I would like to give you an item. Actually, would you rather have Ostrich Rider or Propulsion Device? Uh, Ostrich Rider. I had a feeling. Yeah. Now I am Sanic fast. All Wait, right. was it just this one room? Yeah, we've been here for about 10 years. Oh, wow. All right. Um, okay, so we have 65 a month. There's a chance that something can go wrong with the company and then the, the value of the dividend would be would be decreased. Yeah, so okay. if they decide that 
they're just they they don't really want to pay out that much in dividends they could just say hey we're cutting our dividend shareholders would not be happy at all because on a dividend stock most of the value of the stock is caught up in the dividend because people are calculating the value of that stock based on the cash flow that they can expect from holding it with the dividend but i mean they still could and, and that's a risk you take mm -hmm. so the other thing you could do is you could just not try and get like regular return with dividends or bond payments or anything like that and you just be like i am just going to buy something and then i'm going to hang on to it forever so you would probably be doing something like uh buying a well-known company like microsoft or amazon or Facebook and then you just wait for the value to go up and then you have more money later because those those companies are all so incredibly wealthy they're not going anywhere right right the chance that they go bankrupt and you lose all your money is so slim okay but I assume it would be a slightly lower return on investment a slightly higher return on investment really but yeah it sounds so like it's lower have, risk well, that's just because of the way I phrased it, right? So here's the thing. Your risk is that you don't have a guarantee of return. Oh. You don't. Yeah. So you're not receiving these fat dividend payments. You're not getting coupon payments from bonds or anything. The only thing that you can count on is other people willing to pay more for the stock than what you paid for it. Huh. That's the entirety of your game. So people could just decide that company is not really worth what you paid for it and then the price in the market goes down no one wants to pay that much for it anymore and you're stuck but you could hold those shares for a very long time and wait for people to eventually come around and want to pay more for them because those companies are not going anywhere so what exactly so, is a dividend then a dividend is oh, just fuck. A dividend is when you don't die. <laughs> a dividend is just... Boards of directors are like, hey, we need to Thank provide you. some kind of return to people who have invested in the company, given us their money without the expectation of a regular cash payment that, that debt would demand. Mm -hmm. So how can we do that? Well, one way we can do that is we can just give them cash payments anyways. And that's sort of what dividends are. They're paid quarterly, generally. Um, but they could be distributed on a different schedule, uh, depending on if the company is a total fucking maverick or not. <laughs> you, you can expect a dividend payment quarterly, which is every three months. Gotcha. Um, and that's like that's going to be like a few hundred dollars. Yeah? No? Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, Pingu, but, uh, no. I thought you said it was, like, 60 a month, and you're saying every three months. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a few hundred dollars, but it's not, like... It depends on how many shares you actually buy, because the dividend is calculated based on the number of shares. Right, but, but we'll say it's the same 10K. You know, I think that's a good way all to all keep right. analyzing so, all of this. Okay, so, yeah, you'd get, like, 200-ish bucks. Okay. Okay. If you if you bought a cigarette company with a real fat seven percent dividend, seven percent per year dividend yield. Gotcha. So what I mean by that is like the value of your dividend payments based on the value of the market value of shares. <laughs> come back, come back. Equ equates to approximately a seven percent return. Gotcha. And that's considered good. What? He's crazy. Stick it, stick uh, it. That, that, that might be considered good. If you're if you're a dividend investor, that is considered good. I got you. If you are a general investor, oh, he's done it to me. If you are a uh, oh no. no oh thing, no. Joe Blow, wh whoever the hell investor, um, that is not good because the Standard & Poor's 500 stock index of the 500 largest companies on the New York Stock Exchange appreciates at a value of approximately eight to ten percent a year go, go, go. so if you've got a dividend yield of seven percent 
you're not beating the S and P, and that's how most investors measure their performance is against a benchmark index. What is the S and P? The S and P 500 is the Standard and Poor's 500. That's the company that okay. that makes the index. Uh, list of the 500. That's where the 500 comes from. Largest companies traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Gotcha. The market. So. The 500 biggest fucking companies are all part of this index, and the index is weighted based on market capitalization, the total value of a company. So there is more weight given to larger companies than smaller companies. So the biggest component of the S&P 500 index is Amazon because they have the biggest dick in the world. Mm, that was not a good play. I surfed it up here, though. I'm terrified. <gasps> Kill this man, please. Thank you, thank you. I am using the... What the heck is this? Oh, Rainbow he... Arch way too much. That weapon blows. The right click is so satisfying. Oh my I'm god. I'm not doing any damage, though. <laughs> I'm not doing too much, to be honest, either. My build's okay, but... um. Yeah, mine is not. <laughs> so thank you for carrying. Oh man. So, so basically, so far they... we've just been talking about ways to get money without really thinking too hard and right. not having very much involvement. Okay. If you wanted to be more involved, you can get a lot higher return. Okay. Okay. But tell me about that. So that that's this is the point where I assume it helps to do a lot of research on like trends and such, and that's why I kind of I fear it, you know, because it's like. It's kind of like gambling at that point, you know? You, you have, hey, you, you can play the hey, odds, Pingu. but, huh? Hey, Pingu, do you want a secret? What? Your research doesn't fucking help. What do you mean? <laughs> there are analysts out there, uh, research firms that have already done all of this shit. They go through the 10Ks, the 10Qs, all the SEC filings, all publicly available information. They make all the reasonable speculation based on uh, recent stock price movements and shit. And they're like, yeah, I'll probably be about here. So they tell you, like the trends. They already. already tell you, like that's it's it's already what it is. Okay. There are price targets that analysts publish for most stocks that are traded. If this is public kind of information, why? Yeah. So what's funny is that it's kind of self self fulfilling prophecy because these uh, analysts are like low special ammo. Oh, I have against the flow. Fuck. Um. These analysts are like, yeah, it'll probably be something like this in a year. And then people are like, that's higher than it is now. I'm going to buy this. And then it makes the price go up closer to where the analyst said it would be in a year. Interesting. So you can actually just make investments based on analyst recommendations. And you're, you're going to be fine in the long run. But if your time horizon is shorter, if you need, you like, you know, I need to get in and out within about six months because I have tuition due or something like that. Oh, I walked into it. That was bad. But it's fine. Okay. Um, because you have tuition due in six months, then maybe you don't have all the time in the world to just do whatever the analysts say because they're looking over like a year and a half to two years. For the buy and hold investor that has literally nothing better to do with their money. Okay, okay. I see, I see. So, it, it, yeah. So, if you have a shorter time horizon than that, then you may want to consider doing something else. So, basically, if it doesn't really matter to you, like, if you can lock away money for a while and be okay with that, then this is, like, pretty safe? Yeah, I'd say so. Interesting. I mean, the thing about uh, index funds particularly is that because they're market cap weighted, they're never going to contain dead companies. You can just hold an index fund forever and it will appreciate. Okay. Even if it goes down, we, we have a horrific crash and the S&P 500 index goes down to $2 today, <laughs> tomorrow, because markets are not open today. <laughs> you, If you just hold it, you will eventually get all of your money back. I've never seen two in a row like that. Yeah, me neither. Strange new technology. Yeah. Probably three. 
Yep. Yep. How did he hit me? <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> GG easy. Where was I? So what exactly, you said an index fund? Yeah, an index fund is just an, an ETF, an exchange traded fund that is a single security that is multiple securities. So you buy this one thing and you, what you're buying is a basket of goods. So it's like if you went to the store and instead of grabbing a shopping basket and putting in onions, carrots, pasta, cheese, and bacon, you just bought a basket from someone else that okay. already had all that stuff in it. Okay. That's a good analogy. I, I really appreciate the analogies. <laughs> yeah, whatever I remember to make them. <laughs> um, so index funds are really good if you just uh, want to buy stuff. But the most, the most power that they have is because you will always eventually make your money back, is if you do what's called dollar cost averaging and that's basically when you buy and hold and then you buy more and then you buy more and then you buy more and what, more, what is and buy more. and hold buy and hold is when you buy something and then you hold it <laughs> okay but <laughs> you do not sell it you okay, do not okay. liquidate at any point until you are dead and cold in your grave but, but why what's well, the purpose uh because when you when you do a buy and hold strategy because you are never selling, you're never out of this security. You are always able to take full advantage of every upward price movement. Huh. The reason that you would uh, handle the downsides is because if... They're huge! Uh, if you have... Uh, if you're playing with... Like, a large amount of money and you can kind of like ease into something what you can do is you can buy a share at like i don't know 35 dollars a share your cost is 35 dollars if the market price goes down to 31 dollars because of a bad earnings report or whatever you can buy another share and then you have two shares and your average cost is lower over a long period of time you do this over and over and over again you can get very low cost basis so your average cost to actually hold a security is low. So your profitability is much higher on average. Hmm. Okay, I, I think I'm I'm following. Yeah, so but... like the, the name of the game of the most powerful investing strategy is just making your shit cost less. So how would you know when and what to buy? How would you know when and what to buy? That is an excellent question. And the answer is it depends. Do you have magic analysts for this one too? Kind of. <laughs> I mean, there are uh, companies that can make suggestions as to uh, what you should be looking to buy. Jim Cramer does this on Mad oh, Money. Oh no. <laughs> he will give his opinion to people on uh, what stocks are good whether a particular stock is a reasonable buy or not. Um, but honestly, you can't go wrong by just like, hey, I had a Coca-Cola at a restaurant today. I'm going to buy a share of Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. You want to know how Warren Buffett invests? Have you heard of Warren Buffett? I have heard of him. Right, so Warren Buffett is... Uh, called the Oracle of Omaha because he just got very rich by doing what's called value investing, where he basically just looked at a bunch of companies, decided that people weren't paying enough to own the shares, and then he just bought them. And it was companies like uh, uh, Coca-Cola, Apple. Um, I don't know if he invested in Facebook. He probably did. Um, and then they just exploded in value and he owned a lot of very cheap shares and then he, all of a sudden he had a lot of money and people are like warren buffett's a god he's so good and he's like i literally just bought was, was i plastered on the windows of the city streets that i was walking around in. it's not it can be very uncomplicated if you want it to be so here's another thing how, how do I how do I choose what to invest in? Right. Okay. 
Uh, go find a newspaper. <laughs> open it up to the stock section. Uh, put it up on a dartboard. Blindfold yourself. <laughs> throw a dart. So it really doesn't matter. It does not fucking matter. No. The only thing that that where it would matter is if it's like this company that's come out of fucking nowhere and they have no product. They have no current business to speak of. No cash flow. Like Virgin Galactic. S ticker symbol SPCE. They are my favorite because they are like Richard Branson, uh Virgin Mobile. Virgin Airlines. Yeah, yeah, I got you. That guy? Yep. Um he's fucking insane. He decided that he was just gonna be like, yo, what if we had low orbit flights for rich people? What? Yeah. That's... So it's like a 30 minute low orbit flight around the earth. <laughs> or some shit I like that. I did not know that existed. What the heck? Okay. I'm dead. Uh, Virgin Galactic's only customer so far has been Richard Branson. <laughs> shit, I'm dead. I'm going, I'm going. They are uh, basically still. All right. They are basically still trying to figure out how they're actually going to make money, um, and actually get the science of their product Bro. down. So they don't have any real income. They're just spending money at this point. So any investment that they receive is purely speculative. <laughs> that is gambling. No, he's knocked me away. Oh, oh, oh. He actually hit me with the knockback. I've been defeated. Why? I've triple dashed backwards and he murders me. Richard Branson, what have you done? <laughs> Come here, you piece of garbage. Oh my goodness. I can't believe he did that to me. I literally triple dashed backwards and he still hits me. That's amazing. But not as amazing as the returns that you could get by buying Virgin Galactic. <laughs> I can't believe that exists. That's actually crazy. Yeah. So I would say that a speculative purchase of stock on a company like Virgin Galactic or Nikola Corporation is like, that's fucking gambling. That's fucking stupid. You shouldn't do that. Right. But a company that is out of multiple companies that are established that you've heard of uh procter and gamble pfizer johnson and johnson coca-cola pepsi visa mastercard um google amazon fucking <sighs> who, who else oh right, we got I a picture know. but like what, what exactly yeah. are we buying we're, we're buying stocks okay, shares okay. of the company gotcha 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 so all we're going to do is we're just going to buy these shares of the company and we're just going to wait until other people are willing to buy them for more than what we paid them for them for. Okay. okay. And that's kind of okay. like now we're getting into the more traditional investing. Right, thing, right. right. Like, this is what you're I just, knew of. Yeah. So all you're doing is you're just picking a ticker symbol. You're picking a company out of the hat and you're just buying their shit. And then you're just waiting until other people are like, hey, I want that. And then they're willing to pay more to receive the shares than you did. And then you can just be like, yeah, you know, uh, at this point, I've paid $8 a share for 100 shares. This other guy's willing to pay $10 for 100 shares. I'll, I'll take that. I'll, I, I, I'm good with that amount of profit. It's 25%. Mm -hmm. I'll let him go. Right. And then you receive one thousand dollars, and you move on. So it's really just a question of when and deciding when to sell. Yeah, and that when you enter a, a position on a stock, you kind of need to understand what you want to make out of it. So, like typically, uh, people are like, if you make like two percent in a day, just fucking get out, take it, walk away, run like a thief in the night. Hmm. But if you're taking more of the long view and you're like, you know, I'm putting this money away from my retirement. And if it's not invested in this thing, it's just going to be invested in some other thing. Maybe you never oh. sell. You never sell? Oh, hold on. Well, hold on. thank you for stopping by. <laughs> I appreciate it. Never being like, you know, if, if it's between investing in 
Coca-Cola or Kroger, I mean, you're already in on Coca-Cola. Just leave it alone, you know? Is there really a point to trying and to try and move around when both of these stocks are they're established they don't have a whole lot of high growth potential they're not like doing anything industry groundbreaking to where people are like they're gonna make a shitload of money so it's like you, you just leave it alone you mm -hmm. buy it you walk away you come back when you're an old decrepit man <laughs> is that but is then there's is that a guaranteed Sorry, increase then, or no? Almost. Okay. So you have a very, very high chance of uh, making money over the long run. And the way that you can make that basically 100% is by dollar cost averaging. Okay. So let's okay. say that a stock doesn't move like at fucking all. So over 100 years, you buy it at $35, and then 100 years later, there have been no stock splits, so you don't have this division <gasps> of equity where... You don't have this division of equity where, like, uh, one stock becomes two, two stocks become four, or something like that. Um, it's literally just nothing fucking happened. It's been $35 a share for 100 years. Hmm. If you didn't do any dollar cost averaging, you would not make any money in 100 years. And okay. You would be considered, you would be considered okay. a massive dumbass. <laughs> this is like kind of what I, I knew of. So t tell me about this concept then. The dollar cost averaging. Is, is, is That's what we're talking yes, about, yes, right? Yes. Okay. So dollar cost averaging is basically when uh, you can only really do it when you either have uh, money that you're feeding into your brokerage account, like you're working a day job and you're getting a paycheck and you've got like 50 bucks left over at the end of every month. You can just throw that into your brokerage account and then you buy a share of stock. And it doesn't really matter what the price is, you just buy it. So I don't know how the term dollar cost averaging came to be, but basically what you're doing is through um, continuous purchases of stock your cost basis gets pretty close to in line with what the average price of the security has been over a long period of time what exactly is a security because i've used the term before i don't know what it means to be honest oh sorry uh a no security worries. is just a broad way to refer to something that's traded in a financial market. okay okay so that's like so everything a security is just something that you buy so everything we've talked about thus far has been a security. A like bond all... is a security. Right, An right, ETF right. is a security. A diversified bond fund from Fidelity, this mutual fund, is a security. Gotcha. So when I say security, it's just like I'm trying to be very broad, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I just didn't have oh, never understood the term, but I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. By the way, any reason you're playing a cat, man? That's a good point. I actually didn't think about that until now. <laughs> I think that's probably why, because if you had two guns, that would have been. I was easy really time. enjoying the big hippo of that game. Like, I had infinite ammo for some reason. Like, against the flow, somehow it works better with it, that weapon than the gloves. Maybe the fire rate. And I, I just target switched for 100 years. And so the did freaking you, lantern. How did you actually hit your shots? The recoil is awful. It's okay. I mean, like, when I'm, when I'm constantly holding mouse one, eventually it just caps. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I think the stun build is what I got to do though. What's up, hacker boys? It's been a while. An investment is literally just gambling. Can can you address this claim? Because I've, I've investment heard is literally just gambling. It can be if you want it to be. I mean, if you if you are a day trader and you're like, I'm gonna buy this fucking thing and I'm gonna make money on it, then it's like probably fucking not. So there, there's a lot that goes into investing that makes it not gambling. And a lot of it just comes down to the, sh the mindset that you approach it with. And I know that sounds fucking stupid because it's like, it's not gambling if it's not gambling. <laughs> Hear me out. If you're a day trader and you're like, I'm going to be in this stock for one day. I'm going to buy it in the morning. I'm going to sell it in the afternoon before the market closes. So that's what a day trader is? 
Yeah. Okay. And you're just you're so just trying happy. to I scout small again. movements over one day. You're not holding a security overnight. You're not married to it. You're just trying to get a couple dollars, maybe. Um, that's gambling. Yeah. Okay. Because you have no way of knowing or reacting to any market movements. Um, you you can't develop a strategy to deal with what's happening and your entire thing is just i'm gonna buy this shit and then i'm gonna sell it and i'm probably gonna lose money and then i'm gonna be mad and then i'm gonna buy this shit and then i'm gonna lose money and then i'm probably gonna be mad <laughs> it's like this awful cycle right so the way that you can make it not gambling is uh basically through cost basis reduction which i was kind of touching on a little bit earlier um the methods through which you reduce your cost basis in a security to improve the possibility that you see any profit at all starts you, you start getting away from uh it being gambling hmm. and then you remove yourself completely from the gambling aspect when you're like i'm buying this company because i believe in its ability to do good for the world uh to make me money um, I'm buying this company because the dividend is good and I want some consistent cash flow, stuff like that. Then you're not gambling whatsoever. You have a purpose uh, for the money that you're putting into these, these securities that you're buying. Okay. okay. So another, I, I don't know if you want me to talk about options just yet because that gets a little more complicated. We'll get to that in a moment, but let's, let's finish the thought okay. on... Um... What, the, the dollar ratio whatever it was <laughs> dollar cost averaging <laughs> so th the idea is that by keeping your um your cost basis fairly closely tied to whatever the recent movement of a security has been then you know it over a hundred years this stock that started at 35 and ended at 35 it's not just going to be 35 for forever there's going right. to be some fluctuation right right, right. So the idea is that if it goes from, I think Red Hat is a fucking excellent example because they are a company you've never fucking heard of, yep. but they pretty much went to zero in the dot com burst in the uh, late nineties, and they were valued at like eighty bucks a share or something like that, mm. and then they went to like two dollars a share, but they still were around. They survived, and they're back up to like I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. A share. The end point so and the start point it, being the same doesn't mean it's been the same the whole time. Yeah. So there's been a lot of movement. And if, if you just ignored, if you bought Red Hat and then you just ignored it and you waited for it to come back up and it's like, all right, good job, dumbass. But if you were invested in Red Hat and it went down and you were like, okay, they're not bankrupt yet. There's, you know, they have a plan for, for coming out of this and they could pretty reasonably be worth more later based on the technologies they're still working on. Then you would buy more shares and those shares would be really fucking cheap. So your average cost basis uh, for acquiring your position in Red Hat is lower. Mm -hmm. So if you bought one share at 80 and then you bought another share at two, you've got two shares at 82. So that's a $41 average cost basis. Okay, okay. That that's sense. a lot better than 80. So but, the idea is, the idea is over time, you can actually take advantage of down moves in price by increasing your position size and buying more stock cheaper. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, so but even what if you if... start at thirty-five, you end at thirty-five. If there was some downward price movement in between that you could take advantage of, your average basis is lower than thirty-five, so you have made some money. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But what if um, either? There are no significant downswings, or the final endpoint is lower than the start point. Okay, is this where I start talking about options? Because that actually <laughs> is a perfect segue. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, in a stock that does fucking nothing, it does not move whatsoever. There's going to be people that think it will move. They're like, any day now, it's going to go up to $5,000. And I'm going to have my big break. And then it just fucking doesn't happen. Hmm. That, that, but that speculative mindset uh, that people have, and 
this is most of the reason why people think that investing is just gambling. Um, is why options, calls and puts, have value. And the idea is that if you know that this thing is a, a geriatric that isn't going anywhere outside of its recliner, <laughs> uh, you can actually just sell these options to speculators that are willing to give you money for the chance at having a highly leveraged moon shoot. Okay. So, what you can do, even if it doesn't do anything, is you can still make a return by selling options. This is the highest risk thing that you can do outside <laughs> of having $200,000 to be classified as an institutional investor and then buying into a hedge fund. So, your involvement with options trading can be something as uninvolved as selling covered calls, which really is no different from just buying and holding shares of stock. Um, or it can be... <laughs> this is not a great venue for this fight. That scared the life out of me, I'll be honest. Uh, or it can be as involved as... Uh, there is an earnings report coming up and people are expecting a big move and you're going to watch it like a hawk to try and get a few dollars off of moving premiums. Prices paid for options. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, when you're trading options, if you buy premium, if you are purchasing options, it's speculative. That's gambling. Because you're literally just saying price is going to go up or price is going to go down. And I bet it's going to be a lot. And then you're probably going to be wrong. And you've lost money. And then you're like, system is rigged. It's all just fucking gambling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you are on... The thing that's interesting about uh, financial markets is that it's two-sided. And what that means is that there's nothing stopping you from taking the other side of that huh. trade that uh, that other guy lost a ton of money. On. Right. So, a guy buys calls on Google, and it's like $2,000 strike. So he's saying the price of Google is going to be at or above $2,000 by some day. And then it's it's fucking not. It goes up to like $1,800, and then it goes down to like $1,750. His option is not worth fucking anything, because why would you buy uh, shares of Google at two thousand dollars, when you can buy it on the open market for for seventeen fifty, and he's just lost a bunch of money. But the money that that guy lost was money that the guy that sold him the call gained. Okay, can you can Does you define? Yeah, that makes sense to me. But can you can you give a full definition for like calls and puts? Yes. So that's that's the next thing. Calls are uh, instruments that give the owner of the call the right but not the obligation to purchase 100 shares of an underlying security at the strike price on or before the expiration date specified in the options contract okay so, so you kind of like reserve some shares but you sort of so what you do is you give someone else five bucks and you're like all right so if i feel like it in two months, I'm gonna buy your your thingamabob for ten dollars. What, what do you mean and the thingamabob? Like, okay, but it turns out that the thingamabob actually is secret alien technology that museums want to have for I don't know cultural research or something. Okay. Like that. And so the thingamabob is actually worth like two hundred million dollars. Okay. But you already have an agreement with this guy to be able to buy the thingamabob for 10 bucks. So, like, holy shit, you made a ton of money. Okay, okay. That makes sense to me. But if the thingamabob turns out to be, like, a counterfeit art piece, mm -hmm. then, like, nobody wants the fucking thingamabob. It has no value. Are you really going to pay $10 for this thing? Mm-hmm. And you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. You can just not but you've already put in the money for the you, option you, correct okay. you've already put okay. in the five dollars to be able to buy the thing i can see why this is the most akin to gambling 
Yeah, so when you when you just buy options, you are gambling. Let's let's not make any mistake about that. But when you sell options, it's like, okay, you have a couple more elements in play now. Because oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. So that there is another way out. It's not just hoping the company like, you know, delivers on their promise and goes up in value. Yeah. You've got the other so side of the coin. Yeah, so the simplest way that you can engage with options is through what are called covered calls. And what that is, is you own 100 shares of the underlying, and then you sell a call. Because the call gives the owner of the call the right, but not the obligation, <laughs> to purchase 100 shares of the underlying, if they decide to exercise that call, um, you you have to give them 100 shares, right? You already have 100 shares in your possession, so you just you just sell them the 100 shares. Done deal. Okay. So not only do you receive the premium, what they pay to receive that option to purchase, you may also potentially get to liquidate your uh, stocks for more than what you paid for them. Okay, okay. If you don't, and and this is where cover calls are really fucking powerful. Um, if you if if they choose not to exercise that contract, you keep the premium. And the premium that, that what is this? This is the new boss. Have you fought it? I have not. No, this oh, is brand boy. new. Uh, oh, I want this so bad. This is also, this is the exact same shop I had last time. That's crazy. One sec. Fire enthusiast. All okay, right. so this boss I'll give you a little mechanic explanation. Um, oh, it's been so long since I had one of these. So at seventy percent and thirty percent, he goes in the middle of the room. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, he'll put down rocks and then shoot like markers with for with lasers. After like two seconds, the lasers will detonate, and you can either do like a last second dodge, which is very very hard or just hide behind one of the rocks. It will destroy a rock. He'll probably repeat the process a few times. Um, and that's about it. However, when he uh, slams his hands into the ground, you want to get away from your cover, the rocks, because they will explode new damage. Okay. O other moves are when he shoot, he summon like a bunch of rocks and throw them at you, shoot them to destroy them. Uh, and the last move he has is like sh firing his fists at you like a, a mech, you know? Oh, I think that's what they do at cool. least. Uh, my weapons are trash. I kind of want something different, but I my know. weapons are also trash. But I will, I will acquiesce the dual fang. If all of our weapons are trash, then we're just bringing a dumpster to this guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the reason that cover calls are so very powerful is because when you keep the premium, you are effectively reducing your cost basis. Cost You're basis. getting that kind of cost basis reduction action without having to put up a bunch of extra money to increase your position size. Oof. Yeah, that's a move. What exactly is a cost basis? Uh, cost basis is just how much money you paid to get in, into your stock position. Okay. Gotcha. So if... Um... <laughs> that's the move. And then he summons more. Uh, if you if you buy uh, 100 shares of Kroger at $31 a share, your cost basis per share is $31. Okay, gotcha. If you sell a covered call for 30 cents, then you're agreeing to sell. Oh fuck this bag. <gasps> then you're agreeing to sell 100 shares of of Kroger at whatever strike, probably $31.50. <laughs> Um, He's fine. The first. This is this is so hard. It's okay. We, we can always talk after the boss. I mean, we're all, we're gonna get there. It's not, we're not... <gasps> okay. I dodged it. I'm insane. Dude, my kick is so good. It's actually an iframe. What? Really? Yeah. Apparently. Are you sure you just didn't dodge it? All right. I'm I'm gonna kick right into it. Oh, <laughs> too, all right. Too late. <laughs> well, goodbye, golem man. I make you play Dirt Rally 2.0. I've played the original. I actually liked it a lot. Mystic Mirror. Okay. Um. So, if you are in at thirty-one dollars a share, and then you sell a call at the thirty-one fifty strike. Uh. All right, cleave build. You sell a call at the thirty-one fifty strike. You're agreeing to sell hundred shares of Kroger at thirty-one dollars fifty cents each 
on or before the expiration day. Okay. If the market price of Kroger never hits that 3150, then the guy that bought that option from you never has any reason to exercise it because he can just buy the shares on the open market cheaper. Right. Exactly. So the option expires, you keep the premium, and your new cost basis on that position goes from $31 to $30.69. Why? Be because you have collected you have collected uh 31 cents in premium per share for agreeing to be the other party to this guy's transaction that never really came about. Okay. So your total you yeah, you've made, you know, 31 cents per share, $31 by selling this call. Right. But you can either just take that money out of your brokerage account and like pay your electric bill with it, <laughs> or you can or you can leave it in and count it against the cost basis of your shares. And if you do that, then you can effectively either use the premium to buy more shares and potentially get more dollar cost averaging that way without having to put more money into the account from your day job. Or you can just use that money and put it towards other positions. And you can start diversifying your portfolio. Okay. Okay. That that does make sense to me. So effectively, you can have shares for free. <laughs> just, you know, you need to, you need to put sell in enough options on them. This one's pretty good, actually. The, the This alternative lizard. Yeah, I saw that. I thought it was kind of weird. It is very weird. I mean, both of them are, to be fair. Okay, I I'm understanding it. So, can we talk about, like, the process a little bit? Like, this seems like the most difficult one, the one that we require the most knowledge to actually make a profit off of. Is that true? Yes and no. Okay. So there is a lot of science behind uh, options trading and picking strikes, expirations, uh, optimal timeframes, understanding how these things behave uh, in price because they're very complex instruments. They're highly leveraged instruments. So there's a lot of risk to them because it's, you know, one option controls a hundred shares. That's right, a lot. Right. Also, literally, it is a lot. Because in the stock market, one lot is 100 shares. <laughs> I'm going to put about a million, million grenades under him. Oh, I can't. All right. I'm, I'm going to kick him. <laughs> He's just walking slowly towards you. Nice. <clears throat> uh, but when it comes down to it, despite all of the math and science, it kind of comes down to just picking a stock, picking a strike, just being comfortable with it, you know? So if you're going, if you're going to get into, um, more advanced strategies where you need to understand how these options move so that you can manage your overall portfolio risk, that's one thing. But if you're like, you know, I'm good with just selling covered calls. Oh, sh wrong button. I'm good with just selling covered calls. I'm, I'm just going to buy, you know, 100 shares of uh, Altria MO, that 7% dividend stock I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to sell covered calls on it and call it a day. You actually get the benefit of uh, the covered call premium and holding the stock for dividends. Because okay. you still own these shares, right? You're right. a shareholder of record. It's pretty good that way. And it's pretty but low if you risk were gonna... comparatively to... Yeah, it's it's probably the lowest risk that uh, you're going to have with options. Okay. So, honestly, for that, if you're willing to accept enough risk to buy and hold stock, you should accept the risk of covered calls as well. Because your hmm. risk is entirely to the upside. The only thing that could go wrong is if the stock explodes in value because when you sell a covered call, you are kneecapping your profits. What do you mean? So if you have an agreement with someone else to sell them 100 shares of a stock at, you know, $35 a share, 
even if you bought it at uh, twenty dollars a share, if it goes up to fifty dollars a share, you're still obligated to sell it to them for thirty-five dollars a share. How is it good? Well, it's not. That's your risk. Oh. Right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So you lower your max potential profit in the event of a crazy up move but in exchange you have a much higher overall probability of making any money whatsoever okay but what about in a significant down move how how is there no risk of downwards movement there there's no additional risk in uh down movement when selling cover calls than there would be if you were just going to buy and hold the stock okay comparatively well. to the stocks yeah okay i get i get you then yeah so if you're comfortable with buying and holding stock you should also consider doing cover calls because your risk is basically the same. Okay, that, that makes sense to me now. I, th I thought it was just like directly a good thing, but compared to, comparing it to, to stocks makes sense to me. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so is, is that's what you would recommend if someone was interested in options trading? Is, is there a potentially like more profitable, higher risk way to go about it? Yes. So what you can do is now I'm going to talk about puts. So okay, yes, that's the other side of the coin there. I completely forgot about. Yeah. So puts are uh, when someone buys a put, they have the right but not the obligation to <laughs> sell 100 shares. Oh my! Of an underlying security at a strike price. I see why you, you were saying this is complex. There's a lot yeah. of moving parts here. Yeah, so you have calls which allow the owner to buy, and then you have puts which allow the owner to sell. So you, you can so, sell a call, right? You can sell a call, and okay. you can buy a call. Right, you can okay. also sell a put and buy, buy a, a put. put. Okay. When you sell a put, you're agreeing to be the other party of the transaction of this guy that's got the right to sell. So right. you have to buy. But the interesting thing about puts is that you get to choose what price you're going to buy at. So, like, let's go back to uh, Richard Branson and space. Yep. Uh, Virgin Galactic. Yep. Uh, if I remember right, it closed trading Friday uh, at around $23 a share. I could be like, you know what? I'm going to sell a put at the $20 strike expiring uh, at the end of the year. What I'm doing is I'm saying I will I'm, – I'm comfortable with buying – Virgin Galactic at twenty dollars a share, and I'll buy a hundred shares, and then I just get money for 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 doing that, right? Mm -hmm. If it never goes below twenty dollars a share, then I just I keep the premium. I never had the intermediate step of buying a hundred shares of the underlying. What what exactly is the premium? The premium is what the option buyer pays to the option seller, so that the buyer has the option. <laughs> I hate it to transact okay okay oh okay oh, fuck, oh, okay yeah. i might be going a little hard for these cleaves <laughs> yeah but you're just walking to the entire entire <laughs> squadron yeah I, I need to get the armor regen on my leap first mm. that's pretty nice you gonna get quiz in this tomorrow i i definitely will not remember it all offhand, but it's good to just be exposed to it, in my opinion. Like, this is something I did not, like, whenever he would talk about this, I had no idea what he was saying. Like, my brain would actually just zone out completely because, like, he would just keep throwing all these terms at me that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> but, like, yeah, but, but it sparked intrigue, right? Now you're like, man, I sure wish I knew what the hell he was talking about. But basically what happened was, like, I have this money that's just, like, sitting in my bank from, from doing work, and like I know of investing as like, is there a way to make additional money without putting on too much risk and uh, without like having to do additional like effort? Yeah. So and, the, the and answer was is yes. And then there's of course the degrees of risk that you're willing to take on. Yeah, the degrees so, yeah, of risk, the degrees of involvement and in, in complexity. Right. So it's it, it's really up to you how involved you want to be because going back to the diversified portfolio of bonds, you could just buy into a mutual fund and let a guy that sits in front of the computer all day worry about it for you. Okay. I mean, That's you could sit in front of the computer all day anyways, but... <laughs> but I've got other things to do in front of my computer. 
Right. So it's like, how much do you value your time? But think about it this way. Uh, when you're engaged in an option trade, you do most of your risk mitigation on the front side, especially when you are selling covered calls. Because by the time the, the call is sold and you've collected your premium, you're already set up. You've already managed your risk. You've decided that what you're engaging in is appropriate and you're cool with it. Hmm. The only thing to do is just wait. Okay. Right? Okay, man. So now what if we combined selling a call and a put on the same stock? So not only are you agreeing to sell or agreeing to buy if it drops, you're also agreeing to sell if it goes up. Huh. That seems very safe to me. Is that very safe? How? Really? How, how I, do you mean safe? It means like regardless of which way the market moves, you, you have some sort of a potential way to gain. Yeah. I mean, ideally it, it doesn't go anywhere, right? Because if it goes up and you have to sell it, then you could be stuck with owing your broker shares and the market price is really expensive. Okay. Right? Right. Or if it drops, you could be stuck bag holding, holding the bag on shares that have no value. Bag holding, AKA holding the bag. <laughs> yeah. I well, him. I mean, <laughs> Thank you that's for the what definition. it's called actually that's what people call it like when you get stuck holding a security that has no value you're bag holding you're just waiting for it to come back up so someone is saying it sounds more like you're fucked either way than like you have options either way it it's sounds like you're fucked either way well that's in the event of a, a large move right because when you sell options you get to pick your strike you kind of set the rules there you decide the terms of engagement so Tesla was uh, a pretty popular option to be selling uh, or pretty popular stock to be selling options on for a little while because it's so volatile. People were willing to pay hundreds of dollars for, for the opportunity to purchase shares of Tesla like 30% out of the money, which means that it would have to go up by 30% before there was, oh, I'm dead before there was any value to that option. Because up until that point, it was worthless. Okay. And they shouldered that risk as like a, as a huge brain prediction. Thinking that some, some big moves are coming. Well, the people that bought it were just speculating, right? Right, 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 right. But the people that sold the option were like, there's no fucking way that Tesla is gonna have a 30% move in two weeks one week so they were like i'm basically i'm calling your bluff give me your premium <laughs> i see i see uh, I i'm understanding so, like the two sides of the coin now yeah yeah so what you can do is you can set your strikes super far out of the money to have very low risk so the chance that the stock will actually move in such a way that you would be assigned that the other person that you sold the option to would choose to exercise it, the probability is so fucking low. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing, is that if you only work with securities that you can uh, carry into, into a stock position instead of having to uh, close it and be done and take the loss, then you can actually shift into other strategies. So mm -hmm. um, if you sell a call and a put on an option and they're both at the same strike, that's called a short straddle. It is extremely high risk. One of those options is going to exercise and you're gonna be assigned. Sorry, can you can you define that again for me? I, I zoned out for a moment. <laughs> what is a short straddle? A short straddle is when you sell a call and you sell a put on, at, on a security at the same strike and the same expiration. But because unless the stock closes on expiration day at exactly your strike price, you're, that's not going to fucking happen. You're going to be assigned on one of them. 
because either mm -hmm. the call is going to be below the market price or the put is going to be above the market price. Okay. So someone is going to be able to exercise that to their advantage and they're going to do that. You in turn are either going to have positive 100 shares or negative 100 shares. Either positive shares from the put being exercised or negative shares from the call being exercised. I'm still not fully sure if this is a good or bad thing. Well, it, it, it depends on depends on how you handle it. Okay. So depending on what your position is after the options expire and, and you have the stock position, if the put was exercised, you have 100 shares. You can start doing cover calls. Okay, right, right. So you can go from this higher risk strategy into a lower risk strategy and you can start reducing your cost basis. The other thing that you can do is if you were assigned on the call side and you have negative shares, you can start selling what are called covered puts. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so because you've Another because you've complexity. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> because I'm, I'm you've glad. already you've already sold um, 100 shares of the underlying to this guy, right? Because right. You had to. Right. Uh, so you're negative 100 shares. If you sell a put on that same security... Ooh, purple numbers. If you sell a put <laughs> on the same... If you, stop, stop. You're making fun of me. If you sell a put on the, the same security, uh, then you're agreeing to buy 100 shares, which would take you to zero if exercised. And if you sell a put below your uh, cost basis, then you sold for an amount higher than what you would be buying at. You're buying low and selling high, just in a different order. But then you also have the premium you're taking in. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what I'm... I Th vaguely this is a bit of a quiz here. I don't know if you're gonna. I don't think I will. This. this has been a lot. So your risk profile is a little bit different between covered calls and covered puts, because on, on one hand you own 100 shares of stock, and the other you're short. You owe your broker 100 shares of stock. How is your risk different in each situation? Oh fuck. Can we, can we have a have you ever heard have you ever heard of a short selling firm called Citron Research? I have not. Okay, so they basically have made a name for themselves as uh, fucking idiot shitbags in the marketplace because they sold they sold short they short sold a lot of fucking shares of Tesla. Tesla stock price has multiplied several times over this year. Why is that bad for them? So I can repeat the question. I was reading chat for a moment. <laughs> uh, Citron Research has sold sold short lots of shares of Tesla this year, and Tesla's share price has multiplied many, many times. So why would this be bad for Citron Research? They've sold short. Yeah, so they owe other people lots of shares of Tesla. All right. Um, let me try to break this down with my own brain. So, oh, fuck. You're I got dead. defeated. You've been best in battle. I'm on the way. Yeah. I actually just got 1v2. This, this is not fair. Broken game. <laughs> so, they get into the market when, when Tesla shares were low, and they are short selling. So, they're selling. Yeah, so they're selling before they're buying. They're selling before they're buying. Yeah, that's what short selling is basically. So you short sell when you think that a price is high and you're like, it'll go down. I bet I could just sell this now and then buy it later when it's cheaper. Okay. okay. So you're taking your buy and sell, your buy low, sell high uh, order in reverse. You're selling high and buying low. Right. Okay. Okay. That makes sense to me. And that's what short selling is. So they've been. So if, if if the share price multiplies by uh, eight nine times, that's uh, probably not good for you, right? Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So 
if you... Hold on. If you, Let me continue, oh, one... continue trying to logic this out in my brain, because I, I okay. half understand right now. So, right. they've bought... Uh, they, sorry, they've sold a bunch of shares while they were high. Or they thought they would be high. So that means they just basically guessed wrong, right? Because the Tesla stock multiplied, and then now they can no longer uh, buy low. Correct. Okay, okay. That makes sense. I get it, I get it. Yeah, because no one's going to sell their shares of Tesla for however low they would want to... What the f However low they would want to buy them in order to close the position profit. Mm -hmm. Okay. We should have more of these, like, questions, because I think it's a good way to try to, like, further Better expand engagement my engagement for Pingu Brain. Yeah, yeah. Practice quizzes. Helps me remember things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could do that, yeah. Um, but where do we leave off with your with your? Lecture? So how is your risk profile different between selling covered calls and selling covered puts? Because in one situation you own 100 shares, and in the other situation you're short 100 shares. Mm -hmm. Um, one second. Let me pick an item. I think courage damage is good. Um, <laughs> so let me try to define covered calls and covered puts for myself then. Okay, sure. So how is a covered call different from a normal call? That is my first question to myself. A covered call... When you, so you, when you sell, just... You've mentioned that there's, there's, there's a premium. Yes. And that's that's exclusive to covered calls. Or puts. the premium is just the premium is just what the option buyer pays to the option seller in order for them to have their option to transact. So when you sell, you collect premium. When okay. you buy, you're buying premium. Buying premium meaning that you just have to pay that fee? Yeah, when you buy premium, you pay a fee to the person selling you the contract so that you have the option. And you can, at your discretion, buy 100 shares at the strike price. Or if it was a put, sell 100 shares at the strike price. Okay. okay. On or before the expiration day. Okay. And now what is the covered version of that? The covered version. So the uncovered version is called naked. Okay. So that's when you just, you sell a call. And you're like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> A covered call is when you already have 100 shares okay, in your possession right. to sell to the other guy if they choose to exercise. Okay. So if they chose to exercise and you didn't have those 100 shares, you would have to buy them? Eventually, yeah. So what your broker will do is they will just say, hey, you're legally obligated on this shit, so we'll cover you, but you owe us. Okay. Now you don't owe them the money. You owe them the share. Right. So you you are you have a uh, debit to your account of 100 shares of that security. Okay. You you're short. You owe them. So you don't have to buy immediately, but you just have to do it at some point. Yeah, and okay. you can close that position profitably. Sometimes. So a naked call isn't just the worst idea in the world. Correct. <laughs> There is some logic behind it. Okay, okay, I see. Um, and then a covered one is when you have those shares to begin with. Yeah, so... so now I need to try to define a covered put for myself. So... Yeah. A covered put is when you are... You have the rights, but not the obligation to sell 100 shares. Correct? Not quite. Oh, not no. Quite. <laughs> so, that... You did define a put. When you own a put, you have the right but not the obligation to sell 100 shares. But the covered put is a strategy that uses a put. It's just, it's not an instrument unto itself. It's not an instrument unto itself. Thank you, Mezo. <laughs> just stop it. You're making fun of me. I'm, I'm the one who's struggling with the basic terminology. But, but that, that's, that's good. Okay, I, I have defined a put for myself. Yeah, so you know what a call is, you know what a put is, you know what a covered call is. So how would a covered put get set up? A covered put? But you remember, said, you with said a covered that... call, you're agreeing to sell, but you already have purchased. So you can make a sale and go back to zero. 
I don't even understand how it would work from the other side. If you point. are short 100 shares and you sell a put and the put is exercised, you're forced to buy 100 shares and you go from negative 100 shares to zero shares. Right, okay. That's the covered put. What? <laughs> That's the covered so, put? You go from negative 100 to zero. Yeah, so the reason it's covered is because you've already received money from selling 100 shares. So you, you already have a stock position, right? So was... if you sell a if you sell a put and then it's exercised because you already have money from selling first, you've got the capital to make the purchase of a hundred shares okay, okay. on the exercise. Put. So you have the money, but you don't have like anything to do with the shares themselves. Well, in the end, yeah, you're gonna be zero shares. Have you ever thought about Probably not. An, an investment portfolio in terms of positive or negative shares. What, what exactly do you mean by that? Have you ever thought about if you sold something before you bought it and be like, this is a legitimate position that I am taking because I have a strategy to make money off of this. No. Instead of just buying. I still don't even understand how it's possible to go to the negative shares. So that's that's where the margin kicks in, and this is why it's good that you've got more than two thousand dollars to invest. If you have more than two thousand dollars and you use a broker that is not Robinhood, then you can uh, apply for margin and you can sell shares short. You can sell something before you buy it, mm -hmm. and that means you will have negative one hundred shares because your broker will be like, "All right, cool." we're going to go find these shares for you and we're just going to sell them and then you're going to owe us the shares. Depending okay. on who's willing to lend the shares, if anybody, you may be assessed a, a borrowing fee for having those short shares outstanding. Mm -hmm. But you can still do it, right? All right, okay. I, I, I understand that. So it, it's really the broker that covers all, all of the, like, the share, you know, movement yeah that makes you're just a little telling, bit more sense to me yeah you're just telling them what you want to happen and then they make it happen all right all right um there seem to be a lot of men here <laughs> <laughs> oh there's more i'm still trying to wrap my head around the idea of a covered put so you've you've already sold you, you've done the short selling, right? You've already sold these uh, these shares in the past, right? Correct. That's step yes. one. Okay, so you have the capital from from doing that, right? Yes. And then in the future, you're expecting the share to uh, hold on. So if you've sold it, you've sold a high. You're trying to buy a low. Yeah, generally. Okay. So you're expecting the price to decrease at some point in time in which case someone will buy um will they buy the share you would you're that someone if the price goes down you've already sold it so if you can buy it cheaper than what you sold it for that's good you as in like i'm the person doing the short selling Yes, we're supposing that you, the short seller, are looking at this house. Okay, okay. And you're like, okay. the price goes down to zero, and you're like, fucking fantastic day for me. Right. Meanwhile, everyone else is crying in a dumpster. Because you've already sold, you have the money, and now you can buy back for cheaper. Yes. All right. I'm understanding like half of this now, because we have the uh, like the shares itself, but the, the puts aspect of it, where you have the rights to buy it, regardless. Like, regardless of what happens. Um, that part is a little bit more complex in the, old, in the old cranium. Yeah. So just remember, the the right but not obligation part is entirely onto the option buyer. The seller is entirely obligated to transact if the buyer wants to. Right. The seller is obligated to transact if the buyer wants to. 
So you're yeah. selling this put to someone. It reaches the uh oh, got some weird geometry going on here yeah, on I'm not, I'm not too sure what's going on. But it reaches like the strike point they the the person you sold the put to is like, okay. Uh I, I want to have the hundred stocks now. Right? No, so if you sell a put to someone, they're like, I don't want these hundred shares now. Okay. You have them. I thought puts... I feel like you're get you're so close. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is difficult. This is good. Um So again, I, I put it's the right, but not the obligation, to sell 100 stocks. Correct. When you're selling... At the strike price, on or before expiration. <laughs> <laughs> the strike price Sounds pedantic, is... Sounds pedantic, but it is important, because the... options do expire. The strike price is when the stock hits a certain threshold. Yeah, the strike price is just the agreed-upon transaction price. Okay. Okay. Um... And if you are selling a put to someone, this is like another layer of abstraction above just the shares themselves. Okay. If you're selling a put to someone because they have the right to sell and you're agreeing to be the other party of that transaction, who the fuck hit me? Man, I'm going in like mental gymnastics, absolute circles. I, I got to move on. I'm taking damage. That's fine. That's fine. Gaming time. Thank you, Lime Life underscore. This is difficult for my my tiny brain to wrap my head around. But it's kind of cool when you start. It, it is kind of cool. Like, I I do think that it's like, like damn th wow. There's, there's right. a lot more to this than I thought for sure. Because like, I, I actually just didn't know anything. So. <laughs> but I, I'm 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 definitely interested in these like different layers of involvement within the like what happens to shares and such. Mm-hmm. So, covered put. You sell a put while you have negative 100 shares. Okay. You sell a put while you have negative 100 shares. I understand yeah, so that. So, what's. Wh so, you're still taking some risk, right? Because you have your money involved in some shit. Mm -hmm. But how is that risk different from when you sell a covered call where you own 100 shares and then you sell a call? How is the risk different from when you... Okay. So I understand the difference now. The difference is having the capital beforehand versus having the 100 shares beforehand. Um, but how is the risk different? It's... So what's your risk when you have long shares? When you have long shares. so that, that Yeah, be... when you pay money and then you have these shares. Pay if money you bought and... a million shares of Bear Stearns. <laughs> Um, you are, your, your risk is that the shares will depreciate in value and it's, it's difficult to make a return on investment in the positive. Yeah. Like they go to zero, right? Right. That's right. your risk. Okay. Okay. Shares go to zero. You lose all your money. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Okay. That makes sense to me. Okay. So if you take the opposite end of that yep, and you sell the shares first, so the opposite. And the company doesn't just disappear into the night. It's it's when they increase in value that it becomes a problem. Correct. Okay. Okay. So Citron Research, having short sold so many shares of Tesla, they're they're kind of hurting right now, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! Blew oh, up on me. I almost got hit by that too. I thought I was just gonna cleave him. So that was the, that was the answer then. It's the yeah. fact that if the market moves in the opposite direction, like the other other party would get shafted. Yeah, if the market goes up when you have covered puts, that's not great. Okay, okay. If the market goes down while you have covered calls, that's not great. Okay. But the reason that it's so different, why it's like you really need to think about opening up a covered put position. Start of hour, can't say no. <laughs> um is that stocks do tend to go up over time. They do not tend to go down. Interesting. 
So, so a covered call go, is a, is a safer option. Shit can go up very, very fast. So what you do is when you run covered puts, you can kind of keep up with it because the premium that you pay or the premium that you receive does increase your cash pile and allows you to maintain those short shares for longer. Okay. But it only takes, you know, one good earnings report, one crazy speculative movement before, you know, the stock price multiplies by five, seven, ten times, and your broker is like, all right, you're done. And then they just buy the shares from your account to stop out your losses. That locks in your losses. Then you are a loser. <laughs> Quite literally, yeah. Okay. Honestly, oh. like the second layer of abstraction with like selling and, and and buying and puts puts and calls still pretty difficult for me, but I definitely am coming to a like, greater understanding overall. Yeah. So if you un if you have an understanding of how calls and puts behave, then you can kind of start playing with them in different ways. Okay. So let's talk about spreads. So let's say that you wanted you, you know, you sold a short straddle to get into something and you didn't really care whether you were long or short on it, whether you own shares or owed shares. So you have this share position and you're like, okay, I am now short 100 shares. I'm going to sell a covered put. But I see. You so are a short straddle is basically just a way to put your, put yourself into the market because either way you're going to be in one of the two positions. It can be. But the short straddle is typically not used that way. So okay. what happens with a short straddle is because you're selling a call and a put at the same strike and the same expiration, you're getting a ton of premium. And generally speaking, if the stock does not move, you can just close both of them out for less than what you took in. Why are you getting a ton of premium? Because there is a chance that the stock moves down, but there's an equal chance that the stock moves up. Okay. There's a range of prices in which the stock could reasonably move over the life of those options. And so people speculate based on that range of movement. And as the options near expiration and that range gets narrower, options that are out of the money will cost less and less and less because it just, isn't worth paying the premium to obtain them. Mm -hmm. So that actually, that that phenomenon, that relationship between uh, a decrease in price over time of an option and the price of an option is a measurable thing that we call theta. Oh, I'm being blown up on. Oh, I got hooked. Oh boy, this is a disaster. Disaster city, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. He's dead. Q -q -q -q. Q -q -q. I'm so shocked you didn't die. I got spirit free line. I'm okay. Uh, wow, busted. I got hooked. Get be, be gone. Jesus Christ, man. All right, I, I've eliminated the monk, man. Thank you, thank you, man. <sighs> and you've oh, died nope, again. I got you've been slain once again. Yep. I think I can maybe get there. Probably not. I've been I've been arrowed. I cannot. Unfortunate. That's okay. Sorry, what, what was the topic that was just happening? <laughs> the yeah, good question. The um, the theta. Can yeah, you repeat theta. the definition so again? Theta, theta is basically how we make money when we sell options. It, it's just because like, there's because so we can go out in time and we can be like you know, the stock is going to be. If we figure the stock is not going to move at all, but other people say yeah it's going to move. Then we just sell them options. And then over time, as the stock continues to not move, as we kind of said it wouldn't, people are get less enthusiastic about the prospect of this stock hitting this strike so far away. Okay. So because people are willing to pay less for it to, uh, to buy the option, we can later then just buy that option back ourselves, close our position. And it's sort of like short selling but you've got a better than even chance of making money because there is an inevitable price decay on options. An inevitable you don't price have that decay on, stocks. on options. Yeah. 
That's okay. what theta is. Gotcha. Because options expire and they have no value after they expire, they're only useful for a certain period of time and only in some speculative way mm -hmm. to options buyers. So if the chance that they actually will be useful is low because, you know, there's only two days to expiration and this call on Tesla at the $750 strike, you know, it, it, no one's going to buy that. Right, right, right. That's just dumb. I might die. Yeah, so, I died to AOE or a fire. And anyone that does own the option is going to have to pay uh, a little bit of a little bit of a penalty in that they they can sell it, they can get rid of it, but they're not getting back what they put into it. Okay. Right. So basically you, so that's, you made that's basically a prediction that didn't where work out. Yeah, basically that's kind of where we're, we come in. When you buy options, you must be directionally correct. And you must be correct about how hard the direction moves. When you sell options, you can be directionally wrong and still make money. Because if if you sell a put that's, you know, let's say Kroger closed at like $31 on Friday, and then you sell a put a month out at the $30 strike, Kroger goes down a little bit, and on expiration day it closes at $30.25. You sold a put thinking it would go up, it actually went down. The option still expires worthless, so you still keep 100% of the premium you receive for selling the put. I see. <laughs> okay. I thought I just fell off the map. I thought you paid a premium when, uh, when you, oh, never when mind. you buy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you buy, oh, you pay man. the premium. When you sell, you receive the premium from the guy that's buying from you. Oh, my God. So, I guess that I, I should probably mention this now. Um, the stock market is a zero-sum game. People don't like to talk about it. They're like, yeah, everyone can be a winner and you can get in and you can make money too. It's like, no, no, that's not how it works. Someone's going to If lose. you make money, it's because some other dude lost money. Right, right. Yeah, the Tim something thing. Thank you for the t 10 months. Jesus Christ, man. I appreciate it. What, what the heck? I, I'm 11 months and you're like, oh. Yeah, but. Oh, it's just <laughs> May. Fuck that guy. <laughs> what has May ever done for me? I'm joking. I appreciate you, and my, my brain is currently being eviscerated, but <laughs> I'm doing my best. Yeah. So, um, I've, I've kind of been backpedaling a little bit from uh, where I've been. I, th I think that that's a fair thing to do, considering my lack of general understanding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, calls, you can buy stock. Puts, you can sell stock. And if you sell those options, you're agreeing to be the other party to those transactions. So if you sell a call, you're agreeing to sell. If you sell a put, you're agreeing to buy. Okay, right. So what if we combined the same kind of option at different strikes and we created a spread? As the same kind of option at different strikes. So like multiple call calls at different points, like price points? Yeah, so let's go back to Tesla. Um, let's say we're going to sell the $700 strike call expiring next week. But we don't really want to be in the same situation as Citron Research where we just lose fucking everything. So in order to limit our risk, we're going to purchase a call at the $720 strike. So the $720 strike call is going to be worth less than the 700 strike call because it's further out of the money. And the chance that the uh, price goes to $720 is a lot less than the chance that it goes to $700. So because of that, people are willing to pay more to receive the $700 strike than the 720 strike. Okay, that makes so sense. So because we can buy the 720 strike cheaper than the 700 strike, we still end up with a net credit to our account. We're still How? taking in premium. Because what we're paying to purchase the 720 strike is less than what we're receiving to sell the 700 strike. 
Okay. You follow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I okay. kind of understand. Now, we are short the 700 strike, but we're long the 720 strike. We if are Tesla goes to 300 bazillion dollars by the end of the week, what happens to us? Obviously, the guy that we sold the 700 strike to is going to exercise because he's just a bazillionaire now. <laughs> and then the what about one? us? Are we completely fucked or what? So we're, 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 we got one foot in each of the uh, of the two games. I guess not. It's not both games, but we are we are short selling the seven hundred, right? We are selling. Yeah, we're shorting seven hundred. And we're we're longing the other one. So we have we have. And we're longing seven twenty. So we have bought the seven twenty, right? Yes. In hopes that it will um, go up in price. Maybe. Oh? Maybe. So when you buy a call, what does that do? It gives you the right, <laughs> but not the <laughs> obligation, to buy 100 stocks at a certain price point before the expiration. Uh, what's the other one? <laughs> no, I think that's it. Okay, okay. So... At that point, we probably would not want to. Actually, we would want to exercise the the the, uh, the call because now you could buy them for extremely cheap relative to their value. Exactly. So because we owe someone else 100 shares of Tesla at $700, it's like, oh fuck, where am I going to come up with a, a however much money I said in order to okay. buy 100 shares of Tesla? You know? Yeah, yeah. So if something goes horribly wrong. We can also be on the other side of the equation. Yeah, so we can protect ourselves by having this long wow. call. Wow. And, and the only thing that we risk is the difference in the strikes times 100 shares. So our risk is $2,000. Wow, that's really interesting. Thank you, Caps Lock. I'm sorry we didn't get to your, uh, your, your questions or, or qualms. We just kind of kept going for a while. Yeah, I'm I'm not reading chat by the way at all, so I apologize in advance for ignoring everybody. We we had a few people mentioning some interesting things, but I, I wanted to just let you keep going for a while. <laughs> okay. So yeah, what you can do is you can create a spread, and basically what you're doing is when you create a spread, you are limiting your maximum loss. Okay. Caveat is. When you create a spread and you limit your max loss, you cannot carry a, an assigned option. When you get exercised, you cannot carry that into shares and then pivot into another strategy. It resolves, and that's it. Okay. I see. I see. Well, can you give a counterexample of where you could pivot? Uh, if you have a short straddle and one of those options exercises, as it should... Can you see me reloading? No. Oh, damn. That sucks, because I'm just feeding my hell a ton of fish. Because I got the, <laughs> I got the gem of the damn. magazine capacity. <laughs> how, how many do you have? 56. I need to buy more ammo, though. Oh, my God. He's a hungry boy. That's crazy. Oh, man. So, you, okay. short straddle. It's... Uh, Call, yeah, so call and put the same strike point. So one of them is going to get exercised. Correct. And then because you don't have anything limiting your uh, risk, you will absolutely 100% have these shares that you have to deal with. And you can pivot into right. another strategy based on those shares. Okay. If you buy an option to uh, limit your risk, like if instead of a short straddle, you did um, what's called an iron condor. Uh, which is where you have. I the name is stupid. Um... Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh, you're so bad. Yep. Um, if you have a short call and a short put, 
and then you buy a long call on a long put to limit your risk. So it works on the put side as well? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because the puts are the same thing as the calls, just for selling instead of buying. Right, okay. I mean, I'm not gonna die, I'm completely fine. But I'm upset about it. Spirit feline cheater. Yep. yep. Gear carry trash. Oh, I'm ostrich rider, I forgot. I'm trying to dash. I'm like, why is this not working? I also have ostrich rider. <laughs> it's so good. It is very it's good. like not having the dash is like it's so whatever when you move so fast. Mm. Have fun. This weapon's all right. I'm okay with it. So wh where were we at last? Um. Oh, I'm dead. I'm not rezzing you. No, he was right. He wasn't going to. I clutch these. So when you have a short straddle, you can carry your shit in the shares and you can actually pivot off of that. If you have an iron condor where you basically cap your downside and the stock moves beyond that, your broker's going to exercise your long options because it makes sense to do so. So what exactly is the iron condor again? The iron condor is when you sell a call and then you buy a call at a higher strike for less. And then you sell a put and you buy a put at a lower strike for less. So what you're doing is um, you can move your strikes out which, whichever way you want. But um, you could have both your short call and short put at the same strike, and then you can just cap your losses. But if you do that, if you buy those long options, and the stock price blows past your long strikes, your broker's going to exercise those options because it makes sense to do so. Because if you were planning on carrying any shares, why would you have purchased these options? You like my upgrade level on the chameleon? I did not notice it. Oh darn! <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to go into the uh, the archives. That's fine. That I, this is too much for me at this point. I, I will say there's there's way too many moving parts to understand the iron condor for me. Yeah, it, it, it is it, it is a lot. Freaking iron condor! What a name, man! What a name! I feel like that could it, be the name of a BNS raid. <laughs> it almost is. So. Oh, thank you, Flicker Boy. I, I need to take a moment, use the bathroom, probably dump my brain in water. But um, man, that's crazy. Until I, this more? This isn't the end? There, there could be. Jesus there's, Christ. Uh, there's so freaking much that you can do with options. It's absolutely insane. We're still but, on options, huh? Oh my god. I thought there was Yeah, like, we can be. We can be. Well, we can move on if you don't want to, but... What, what do you mean by move on? I mean, there's more stuff beyond options. There's... Like other uh, securities? Yeah, there's oh, futures. Oh, Christ! And then there's futures options. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, tell, tell me about futures then. Okay, so futures Good night, propaganda. are an agreement to buy or sell some unit that changes based on the future thing being traded um, of Sorry, some we, commodity. I, I already lost you. Can we start from the definition again? Okay, so futures. Futures. Okay. Futures contracts. Futures contracts. They are agreements between two parties to transact. Transact. And exchange 
for money a certain amount of some underlying commodity. Futures do not give the parties the option to transact. Futures are an obligation to transact. If you buy silvers, if you buy silver futures, you are agreeing to purchase and take delivery of several tons of silver. You need somewhere to put this shit. So you're you're saying you will buy a product at yes. some point in time some sort of commodity it can be silver it can be oil it can be random lengths of lumber it can be water water okay, okay. right no. i understand but but why <laughs> but why would you do that though actually there's a pretty interesting reason okay. um lumber futures comes to mind for me because what you can do is by purchasing a commodity by agreeing to purchase a commodity at a pre-specified price you can control your costs and plan into the future so if you have a need for a significant amount of lumber, you can buy lumber's futures. And then you have the supply of lumber that you've already agreed to buy. So it doesn't matter what the market does. You already know what your cost is going to be. So you're not going to get blindsided and have your budget blown out. Okay, I see. But this is mostly the for... The is speculation. What do you mean? It's like if, if the silver market... Silver go up, me make money. Yeah, okay. Good. So Gambling. now we're now we're actually selling a product, sort of, or like a commodity. With, yeah. So futures you can buy or sell, and it doesn't really make a difference because it is in uh, a hard agreement to transact. Futures don't really expire worthless. They are the value of the difference between uh, the agreement and the market price. It's just what it always is. You don't really have theta with a futures contract. Okay. Okay. Now, futures have different margin requirements than typical stocks. So you can get a ton of leverage in the S&P 500 index for relatively cheap. So here's what you could do. You could buy one futures contract on S&P futures, and then you can sell a bunch of calls on SPY. And it doesn't matter what happens, you're going to benefit from the theta on your uh, short S&P calls. Can we redefine theta? Theta is the uh, measurable time decay of the value of an option. Okay. Over time, because it's less likely that an option will be trading at the strike price, um, options tend to lose money. Right, right. That's what theta is. We benefit from theta when we sell an option before we buy it. Right. Because we have a chance of buying it back later for less than what we sold it. Mm -hmm. Even if the stock does absolutely nothing, we can still profit because from of the premium. theta. Oh. Wait, if the stock does abs Oh, I see, I see, I see. If the stock does nothing, then the premium that is paid is like, whoever bought the option from us, they're already you know, out the premium. They already paid us. We can just go home if we want. But if we wanted to close our position and manage our trade early instead of having it turn into stock, then we would have the, we would have a much greater chance of being able to buy the option back to close our position profitably than if we had just bought the option or bought the stock or sold the stock. So basically what you can do is you can set yourself up using futures contracts so that you are directionally completely neutral, but you still benefit from theta decay. Huh. Whatever you gain in whatever you would lose on your short S&P 500 calls, you gain on your S&P futures. Please get me up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any net change in your portfolio value there. How, how are the two so inter like so closely related? Uh, 
they're related in that you can use futures to hedge for directionality. So regardless of which way the stock moves, you'll still be making something. Is you that... can still make some money, okay. correct? I don't so really you understand don't have how, an though. issue. Yes, well, because you have you own this contract that allows you to purchase a lot of units of uh, the S and P five hundred index for very little Certain money. Price. Okay. But then you're also obligated to sell those units of the S and P five hundred for some amount. So if the strike price of your options and the contract price of your futures are the same, then all you're doing is you're just taking a premium. Right? You receive the premium for selling the calls, and then even if they're all exercised, you have this futures contract, and you're just like, all right, I'm going to be purchasing these units of the SPY right now. And then you close out your position. You're new. So in these futures contracts, are you actually purchasing the product in question? Like, what do you mean you're purchasing the SMP units or whatever? Generally, yes. So, so you'll actually end up with like several tons of silver or whatever. Yes, you will. What? If you buy, if you if you are working with a commodity futures contract, you're gonna have to take delivery of this shit. You need to have somewhere to store your silver, your gold, your oil, this your water. This is so strange. Actually, not your water. Water is cash settled. So there are some futures contracts uh, that trade that are cash settled. Like water is cash settled. So what that means is. Hold on, well, let's go, um, let's go back of... to the options for before we introduce any new ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I, I still don't quite follow how, like you, you said, you, you're you selling a call? No? Okay. Okay. Is All that right. is that so accurate? We, we can sell a call if you well, want well, to be selling a call. <laughs> I, I don't understand how, how you can you can guarantee yourself to break, break even except for the premium. Because like in one hand, like uh, so the stock market you... is very in, immaterial. Right? Yeah, so so here's the thing. If you agree to sell, uh, let's say you have 10 contracts. So you agree to sell 1,000 shares of SPY yeah. at... SPY being? Uh, the, um, what is it? Bloomberg's S&P 500 index uh. thingy. ET it, it's an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. It's basically the S&P 500. Um, Can we redefine that again? <laughs> the standard and fourth 500 and ETF or all of it? Pretty much all of it. <laughs> hey man, okay, it's been a so while. It's a lot of jargon. The standard and fourth 500, the S&P 500, is the uh, an index of the 500 largest companies in New York Stock Exchange. Okay. An ETF is an exchange traded fund that basically is a basket of securities. Okay, so that's, so that's the grocery buying... basket with all the things that someone else has prepared for you. Yeah, so instead of buying, you know, each of those 500 companies individually and then trying to adjust your weights with what limited plebeian capital you have, you just buy an exchange traded fund that does that all for you. I thought that was an index fund. Yes, that is what it is. This is That's another name. Yeah, it's another Why are you name. mixing it up on me? Come on, man. I was just <laughs> getting to the terms <laughs> of <I'm> stupid. <laughs> There's so an, an, an index fund and an exchange traded fund are basically the same thing as far as we're concerned. They're technically not, but they are. Hold on. Uh, we were talking about trying to make money from investment. It has gone from like, you know, here here's bonds and dividends, which are low risk, and you can make about $20 a month, to like, here's an incredibly complex system of like many moving parts that I am failing to comprehend for the oh, most Oh man, I never even talked about potential returns on options. What do you mean? Okay, so potential does, returns. Yeah, so does two hundred and sixteen percent annual per oh right 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 return? I forgot. We didn't talk about how much money you're making. We didn't even talk about yeah. stocks either. But I suppose that'd yeah, just be based so, on like the movement of the stock itself. Yeah. So stocks generally, mm, you're looking to beat the S and P five hundred benchmark movement, which is only about. So that, so okay. When we compare, when we say like we're looking to beat S and P five hundred, that's like compared to the biggest moving companies that don't really move that much, right? Well, no, because they they do move a lot because the underlyings are so large and they're so in demand. The underlyings. Everybody knows. 
everybody's familiar with the companies in the S and P 500, right. and people trade the these index funds anyways. So because those funds are being traded, and the companies that are underlying are being traded, there's a lot of interest in these companies that make up the index. So there actually is significant price movement. Like Apple, I think, is up like some forty percent this year. Wow. Amazon, fuck, I don't know, 80, 90? That's insane. Yeah. There's movement. There's a ton of movement. I'm it's surprised. just on it, I've I've just there's geriatric stocks like Kroger that don't move, but those generally are not the kinds of securities you're going to be looking to make, you know, 216% a year on. So, if we go back to Apple, uh, and we're just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to sell cover calls on Apple. They're going to expire every fucking week because I don't know. Do we, it's just where the most effective premium you can collect is. I see. Um, that does not necessarily mean that that's the best duration to be planning for when selling options. It's just that's how you collect the most premium, which... Uh, someone yeah. asked, so, like, how much exactly is premium? Uh, premium varies. Uh, it depends it on... Yeah, premium varies depending on the stock and how volatile it is, uh, how big the underlying is, can how we, far can out Can we define time underlying? The underlying is whatever the stock we're looking at is. So uh, an option on Kroger, Kroger is the underlying. An option on Apple, Apple is the underlying. So how big the underlying is? Yeah, so like Amazon, $3,200 stock. 100 shares is 30, 320000 fucking dollars. One option. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So yeah. the underlying is how much it would cost to buy the stock. The underlying is just what the stock is. So you start with your underlying. <laughs> And then you go out to the options, and the options relate to that specific underlying. Okay, okay, I see, I see. I get you. Yeah. That makes some sense. So you can take in the most premium if you sell weekly options, but I will say that it is not the your highest chance of success. Oh, it's the stone people. Uh, do I leave? I'm coming. I have a level zero concealed ammo, and that gets about it. You know what? That's going to work. Are you here? Okay, you are. Yeah, I'm here. This is so garbage. I have fallen. Uh, generally speaking, if you want the highest uh, rate of success in general PNL, ah. profit and loss, uh, while accounting for controlling risk to a reasonable amount, you're going to want to go like 30 to 45 days out expiration on your options. Because that gives you a good premium and it gives you enough time I'm to leaving. be correct. I can't leave. This is too much for our baby weapons. Let us go. Let us go. You've left. You've died. Yeah. Let us leave. I'll leave. All right. We made it. <laughs> Holy shit. I can't believe we got out. Oh, that was so terrible. That's actually That unreal. was awful. What the hell? I have a garbage kunai and a garbage, like, SMG. The bar should be longer. right here. Why wasn't it at least plus one? We've upgraded a lot, Lobber. We've, like, finished the, uh, the skill tree, pretty much. You got a frenzy shark? This is what you're working with? Uh, yeah. It's fucking great. Yeah? Yeah? How come we had to bail out of that baby room? Because I did not have the frenzy shark. Oh. I really wish to acquiesce another weapon. To acquire. It's, Acquiesce is when you give up. I, I know. It's a stupid joke. <laughs> it doesn't travel well. Um, <clears throat> Sorry. Where, where do we leave off? Uh, 30, 45 days out for um, right, right, right. best overall. But if you just want the most raw premium, do it weekly. And if you can manage to get away with not losing your ass every week on a security while taking in reasonable premium, like on Apple, you can double your money every year. Wow. 
Just do I off... recommend doing that? Is that a reasonable expectation? No. I think we should leave again. <laughs> what? No, this is way easier. I, I have the frenzy shark. I've... Okay, okay, I'll you come back. You worked for me. I, I never mind. Let's just come back after I get another weapon. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, so you can you can farm premium as a potential method of playing the market without having Correct. to. You know, actually, you're like you're, you're hoping that the stocks don't do too much, and then just you know doing the premium to get all your money. Yeah. Okay. So you're just making other people, other people think that shit's gonna do a lot, and then it doesn't do a lot, and then they're wrong, and you're right, and you make money. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. That's I'm basically dying. what it is. Honestly, I I think it's helpful if you think of. Um, the stock market as the world's greatest pvp forum because it is that's what you've told me in the past is a way to get me into into doing it and i said that i don't even like pvp in, in yeah. blade and soul <laughs> yeah but it, it really is the world's greatest forum for pvp because it's literally just like a bunch of rich people throwing their money around at each other to try and get more rich <laughs> okay. the kinds of people that will transact with these options are not you know oh, typical no. investors uh, like you and me or socks are that would just be like yeah I just you know want something reasonable I just want to have more money than I started with right these are people that are like I want a lot of fucking money and they have a lot of fucking money and I don't have a lot of fucking life <laughs> so I do not feel too bad uh, when I take people's money like that like they give me premium I'm like thanks sucker because it's like Come on, man. You, If you don't have better things to be spending your money on, you don't need it. My personal opinion. I see. Oh, I've, 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 I've died again. again. I've died as well. <laughs> All right, well. All right, you waste your res. I'm over here. Help. Let's go. You suck. suck. <laughs> There's no way you die here. <laughs> You're actually throwing. What is this electro ball? Run. Oh man, I should've just busted out French and Shark. I don't know what I was doing with this stupid dragon, buddy. I'm dying? Well then, don't die. This thing shoots so fast, but it's also so bad! I actually got clubbed by that guy's crossbow. I don't know. Nightmare mode's kinda hard. Yeah, it, it, it does seem to be difficult. I've... Okay, not died to this. This is, this is too much for me to... to talk stock and play game. <laughs> All right, are they above us? Or are we kill the room? They're above us. I think the most reasonable way that um, you can expect to get good return for your risk is either selling covered calls or cash covered puts. Cash covered puts are puts that are covered by cash. Don't say cash. <laughs> So how is that different to a normal covered put? A covered put, you already have um, sold the stock to get your um, the capital first. So is it an external capital it. then? Yes. So a, co a cash covered put is where you yourself already have the money in your account. So if I sell a put at $30 strike on Kroger and I have $3,000 in my account, it's a cash covered put. I can just I can afford to buy it if I get exercise. Okay, okay. So in that Are way with buying puts without having the money? Yeah. That's like just gambling, right? Yeah. Oh. Buying options is gambling. I've never said it wasn't. Oh, the whole thing? I thought you said like No, 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 no. So just buying an option okay, because okay. you want to make money is gambling. Right, right. Buying an option because you want to hedge your risk is not gambling. Okay. Buying an option because you want to mitigate your risk on an underlying stock position that you also have is not gambling buying an option if if i bought an option on amazon because i wanted it to go up and make money that's fucking gambling i do not have three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. right there's right. no way that i can do anything with the underlying i'm just buying an option to make money it's just speculation it's just gambling okay I, i'm understanding i'm following <clears throat> yeah so I think that if you just have a pile of cash, the best way that you can reasonably use it and uh, generate some form of return 
is going to be with cover calls and cash cover puts because your risk in that way using your money like that is no different from if you were just going to buy stock which if you're comfortable with buying stock because your risk is the same the stock just goes to zero why would you just not be taking in premium you know right 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 oh i can't believe i got hit by that i did not know just against the flow makes big hippo have infinite ammo and clip yeah, that's actually seems... just period. It's, it's it's not even from clip. It's just infinite ammo. I'm, I'm gonna get that, hit by this. That seems very good. I did not get hit by that, and I don't know why. Lu Wu has bad aim. True. I have no grenades. So, do you want to go back to futures now? I still don't really understand like how futures and calls are related. So the idea is that you're hedging your delta. Oh god. Delta. <laughs> Another freaking Greek letter? <laughs> there's so many fucking Greek letters. God damn. So there's alpha, which is the underlying. There's beta, which is the the direction that an underlying tends to have relative to the broader market. Um gamma is the severity that delta changes. I've insta died. Wow. Delta is no. oh he's 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 done it. <laughs> you're throwing, you're throwing, you're throwing, you're throwing, you're throwing, you're throwing. <laughs> we must go on. Delta is your pure directionality, and uh, theta so, is time decay. So delta is the change of, uh, or rather, the direction the stock moves. Delta measures your um, like what kind of direction you want. In order to be profitable so if you have a long call you have positive delta and then the number that the delta is just indicates intensity so if you have positive delta you want the underlying to go up if you have negative delta you want the underlying to go down okay okay it's not nearly as complicated as uh, as theta some of the other things we've talked about today So for hedging your directionality and, and trying to stay neutral so that you can have a profit no matter what the market does, even if it completely shits the bed, you want to try and keep your delta and your gamma as neutral as <laughs> gamma. possible. G gamma is the rate of change of delta. Okay, okay, okay. I, I can handle that. Yeah. It's, it's, so delta is a derivative of the option right and then gamma is a derivative of delta which okay. is a derivative yes. of the option which is a derivative of the underlying i get you i get you oh man freaking calculus I... <sighs> so by using appropriate futures contracts against other underlyings in your portfolio you can hedge your directionality and be very neutral and then you can make it so that you just benefit from theta time decay because whatever you would lose on your short options because of movement in the underlying you gain because of your futures contract and you would do these for both of the, the same company or well you don't have futures on individual companies right you have futures on index funds so you could do you could do the strategy to hedge oh. against how a broad index moves i see so you'd have to have if your future paid out or rather you had to buy whatever it is that you paid for you'd have just a bunch of, a bunch of random garbage right well that has value but yeah it, well, it wouldn't just be a pile no. of silver you t wait what i thought you get the whole so, basket yeah, so fut futures are extremely complex, and this is part of the oh, reason why fuck. I don't I don't personally trade them. But oh, I left my the, big hippo. Sorry, go ahead. The index funds, index options on the S and P, the Nasdaq, etc. Those are all cash settled. You do not take delivery of anything. Okay. When the futures contract is settled, you just pay up or receive money for the difference. I see. And then everyone goes home. Okay. That's a lot easier to understand. Yeah, yeah. You're not than taking delivery of, of two thousand barrels of oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, you said futures are complex enough that you don't partake in them. 
I do not trade them uh, because they're very complex and I don't have uh, the time to understand how each futures contract behaves. And the under the futures are just they're too big. Ten contracts, a thousand shares of SPY. That's like three million bucks. What the fuck? Sorry, do we define SPY again? Um, what's what's the fucking company's name? Bloomberg uh, oh, right, Standard right, right, right. Poor's Five Hundred. Right, right. So it's just one ETF. particular company. It, yeah, it's 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 the basket of the S and P, but it's just this company's basket. Okay. Okay. So it's n never mind. I, I understand. <laughs> I, yeah. I, guess I should so, try to explain it because it's a good way to can, to expand understanding. Yeah. So the basket is is the index fund. Yes. Yes. Okay. Index fund is a a, a assortment of stocks. Get out of here. Yes. Which are in this case, Bloomberg has picked some variety of stocks uh, from the top five hundred companies. Sort of. Okay. So ETFs can take whatever form the company making the ETF and managing it wants it to. Generally speaking, uh, ETFs that track the S&P 500 have as close to an identical makeup to the S&P 500 as possible so that it does accurately track that index. So while Bloomberg did construct it, they didn't... Oh, hey, look at that. Oh, thank you. While Bloomberg constructed yeah. that that ETF based on the index, they didn't just pick stocks willy nilly out of it because they liked them. They're taking the whole basket. Right. So in that way, whether you buy um, Bloomberg or iShares or BlackRock, Charles Schwab, if it tracks the S and P five hundred, it, it tracks the S and P five hundred. Doesn't matter who makes it. Okay. So why would you choose the Bloomberg index fund over another one? Because it is the most actively traded S&P 500 index fund in the New York Stock Exchange. Okay. And because it is most actively traded, it is highly liquid. Because it is highly liquid, there's a lot of people to scam. I mean, make money off of. I mean, transact with. <laughs> uh... Generally speaking, we don't want to deal with anything illiquid. Like, Google is pretty illiquid. The premiums are really fucking high. Like, an at-the-money covered call, if you can afford 100 shares of Google, that's an easy $1,200 a week. A week? Yeah, 1200 2000 fucking lot of money there. But the underlying is very fucking large, and I don't have 200 grand. So if you have 200 grand to throw around, you can pretty reliably make... 2k you can, a week? you can live on you can live on google cover calls totally wow that's crazy so did we did yeah. we talk about like potential net profits for um our other strategies that we mentioned before uh not really so your potential profit really varies depending on um your turnover how many times a year you um take your profits and redeploy your strategy uh, general market conditions kind of matter depending on how directional you are. Um, so which strategy is this about? Cover calls. Okay. This is the one that you particular, personally recommend. If you are willing to trade stocks, you should do covered calls. I would recommend that you, Pinguify, do covered calls. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So you're willing to accept... A similar level of, of, of risk to just buying and holding long shares. So selling covered calls is your risk is the same. The stock goes to zero. Right, right, right. I don't see any reason why you should then give up the opportunity to make money in the meantime and potentially generate a little bit of disposable income for yourself. You can do that with covered calls. And the other thing it forces you to do is it forces you to take profits because you're obligated to sell. You're not just gonna like hold it forever because you start getting greedy. You're like, oh, it'll go up more. Ooh, baby. You you have to sell. You have to take profits. And at that point, you can kind of take a step back and be like, okay, let me reevaluate where I'm at, where I think I need to be, what's going on with my life, and see if I need to do something different. Holy fuck! 
Oh, you're in the vault. I was waiting for you to come to the vault, and you're already there. Uh, it's Boulder Town. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> you're so free. close. I need to go through. I can't make it. I'm not going to make yep. it. Goodbye. After Boulder Town is climbing boss, victim. You will be revived in next scene. I can buy the peddler. I guess they haven't updated the flavor tag. Oh! Wait, I so there's another shit. strategy that is my personal favorite. It is called the diagonal spread. Okay, go on. So, you know about spreads, right? You, you buy you an buy option, two. you sell an option, and then you buy a less expensive one. Right, right. What if we flip that and we buy an option, we sell a more expensive one? sell a more expensive one or, or we buy one and then we sell a less expensive one sorry right right i was thinking of the other one as like a 700 720 thing yeah it would be the same fucking thing <laughs> it's the same idea it's a similar idea except when we create a debit spread which is what this is we need to have some directionality we can modify our strikes a little bit though so instead of having both options be out of the money we can have our long option be in the money and then have our short option be out of the money. And then in the money, out of the money just means like the price, the strike price relative to the market price of the option. Um, puts are in the money if the market price is below is below the strike price and calls are in the money if the market price is above the strike price. Because in, in, in the money option, it makes sense to exercise it. Okay. So we've got one... We so got we're buying one option, one that's, option we'll profit, we're buying one one we're that buying will... one option that is uh at a much lower strike than the current market price far out in time so that we have a lot of duration on it why because by doing that because one call option simulates 100 shares we can control 100 shares of the underlying for a lot cheaper than just buying 100 shares we can control okay okay so like Amazon, I don't have three hundred twenty thousand dollars. But would you still I trade about? Amazon I do options? have about ten thousand to buy an Amazon option. Okay, okay, I see. So, I can basically get a really cheap one hundred shares by buying a call option instead of trying to do you know one hundred shares. So if I then go back closer to the present day in expiration and I start selling calls at strikes that allow me to be profitable if exercised I'm basically setting up a covered call but I'm using a lot less capital run that by me one more time so by buying an option in the money so it's like it makes a lot of sense, even though it's expensive. It makes a lot of sense to exercise it. By buying an option in the money at a far out expiration date, like one year from now. Okay. I'm able to control 100 shares of the underlying security at a much lower cost than having to buy 100 shares on the open okay. market. So because I control 100 shares, I have the option to buy 100 shares of Amazon. I can sell a call against it. You can sell a call against it? What do you mean against it? I can sell a shorter expiration call against my longer expiration call. What do you mean at against? At a higher strike. So what happens is I'm basically taking an opposing position to what I've already taken. Right. So right. I benefit if I benefit if my short on my short call if the price goes down. But if Amazon goes down, then I lose money on my long call because it's suddenly less valuable because the difference between the strike price and the market price is less. Mm -hmm. So how is this any different from doing it the opposite way where uh, you have the short selling on the low end? Because our expirations are different. Okay, right. So if I buy an option that expires January of 2022, and then I'm selling an option that expires in January of 2021, if that January 2021 option expires, I still have this January 2022 option. I can sell another call against it. 
I then see. if that expires, I can sell another call against it again. I see. And again, and again, and again. And I'm basically just running covered calls so without you're, you're... having to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock. Right, okay. So you're farming premium and you've got a pretty... Uh, my God. And, and your your risk factor it stays about the same the whole time. Pretty much. It's a little bit less because I'm not buying 100 shares. I don't have the option to wait forever for the stock to come back. But my risk is still the same. If it goes to zero and Amazon disappears, I'm still out this money. Okay. So diagonal spread is my favorite op my favorite so why strategy. exactly would you not um do the same like expiration technique when you have like short sell on the low end it's like uh, the opposite well di you can and so you can what you can do is you can flip the diagonal spread right and you can have a long expiration short option you can sell an option, you know, in January 2022. And then you can just buy cheaper options in between to cover you until that option expires. But you, your risk is not the same. You actually have a harder time making money because your desire for price movement is a lot less binary. Why? Desire for price because you want you want it to go up, but you don't want it to go up too much. You want it to go up, but then you want it to go down, and then you want it to go back up a little bit more, and then you want it to go down again. You're trying to rely on a sort of. It's like it seems intuitive because stock goes up, stock goes down, and it's like that's just what happens. You deal with it. But when you want it to happen, it never fucking does. <laughs> Desire sensor. I mean, kind of. What do you say? Is there some reason for it not happening, or do you actually mean it's just like, you know, as a joke? Well, your risk profile is different, right? So you collect a much fatter premium by selling a long expiration option, but you still have the specter of this long expiration option that you have to cover. You have a long allocation of capital, and you can't just easily exit that position whenever you need to. It's a lot less liquid. I see. You can do it. But I, I, I don't really like running the diagonals that way. I prefer to just basically treat it as a cheap covered call. <clears throat> okay. I see. I'm still not entirely following why you want to have like one of your options have like, a long expiration date. Like why, why does it make then a difference? You have a because you have a long period of time during which you can uh, collect premium. Right. Okay. So if you if you so the long the long option is like a safety net in case things like really hit the sh hit the fan, right? Kind of not really. Tell me more. So the reason that you want the long expiration money that has good value to it that, that is in the money that you can exercise it and it has value. Um, the reason you want that is so that uh, you have a long period of time during which you can sell shorter dated options against it. And the general dynamic is that theta accelerates over time. So an option loses more and more value the closer it gets to expiration. Right. Okay, but when sense. it's far out in time, theta doesn't really have okay. much of an effect. I see. I see. So by, by buying this long expiration option to cover you, selling shorter expiration options against it, you're able to collect a lot of theta for relatively cheap. Okay, that does make some sense to me now. So theta is uh, the value of the option, and if the option is not looking like it's going to sell close to the expiration date, then like the value of the option is quite low. Um, you can gain a profit from this by how do you gain a profit via theta <laughs> theta is not the price of the option right the right price of the option is the premium theta is just the decay effect that option prices tend to have over time 
is the range of potential prices that a stock can move goes down. Uh, rip. F. I got I got slowed to an extreme degree. Yeah. I actually did not have worm. much more damage than you, considering I lived for so much longer. It was it's rough. the big hippo. The hippo sucked. Yeah. Garbage. If I had plus accuracy, I think it'd be a solid weapon. Man, this is yeah. this is uh gotten to a level of depth, for sure. <sighs> yeah. It's uh there's there's there is so much to options trading and so many different ways that you can change your strikes, your expirations, and everything else that you can really make them do whatever you want them to do. But you you just have to understand the risk that you're taking by engaging with them. Mm -hmm. They are big products. It's 100 shares of the underlying security. It's not like just, you know, I've got $600. I'm going to buy, you know, one share of Coca-Cola and I'm going to enjoy my... I don't know, mac and cheese from the dividend. <laughs> you're playing with much bigger underlines, and right, they don't right. cost very much, or you're, you're dealing with much bigger securities. The They don't cost much to get into, but the amount of leverage that you have is significant. If the stock price moves one cent, that's a dollar to you. If the stock price moves a dollar, that's ten. that's $100 to you. So okay. it's like there's okay. there's a lot there. And because so cover calls and covered puts, you really are not concerned with the dynamics of how these options behave over time. So you just kind of hand out these options. You just write contracts and it's like people buy it and you don't give a shit. And then diagonal spreads, you just do that, but you're using long options instead of shares to cover yourself. So you don't really need to know too much about how they behave but on other option strategies that are a little bit more complex and in understanding how to manage them if things go wrong you do need to be very very engaged with how everything works and the behaviors of these options prices given certain circumstances okay okay so I, the the benefit of this is that you don't really have to interface too much with the actual movement of the stock um or like understand it that well you're just farming premium yeah it's you don't have much more involvement than you otherwise would if you just bought the stock right okay so if you're down to buy shares of a company i think you should be down to do cover calls i think my personal opinion and i am not a financial professional and I am not giving you advice to buy or sell securities of any kind. <laughs> and you should always consult a financial professional before doing any of this. And see if um, options are right for okay. you. Okay, is there a way to simulate doing this? Because I, Yes. I, tell me. So I, I can so like practice there, and understand before I actually, you know, actually put money on the line. There are lots of brokers that offer paper trading accounts. Um, my personal favorite is Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade. They have an incredibly robust platform and you can trade literally anything you want. They'll let you trade uh, stocks, ETFs, options, futures, Forex, futures options. We didn't get into that, did we? Yeah, no, but it's it's not important. <laughs> futures options is options, but on futures. <laughs> okay. If you know options on equities, you know options on futures. I see, I see. So the, the difference is, okay, never mind, I'm not gonna bother. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that's pretty neat I, I think I, I would like to try you know I, I don't want to commit right away because I'm definitely very nervous about that kind of thing um, mm -hmm. but I, I would like to see um, potential gains through certain you know methodologies I smell a paper trading competition in the penguin fight I don't know about competition that'd be pretty cool <laughs> actually if we, if we can get a bunch of people involved yeah I, I'd be willing to put up like a $50 prize pot <laughs> Oh man. Maybe we should have like a week first where like um you you tell us you, know, you give us ideas on what we should be doing and then after that we'll you know we'll go buck wild. Okay. I'm down for that. I would be pretty neat. I'm in. I'm just, I'm probably just going to do nothing but forex because my experience with forex has been pretty awful. And it sounds like it would be funny. Also, mainly because Forex, I can trade at all hours of the day and night, and uh, 
You cannot do Stock that. Stock market with... is only open a few hours every day. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the so... nice thing is that you can queue up your trades in advance. Like, so for you. Uh, stock market is open from 9.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. But you can tell your broker, hey, I want to make this trade. And then they'll be like, okay, we'll route it through when the market opens. Okay. So you don't have to be paying attention whenever the market is open. But it is kind of fun to, like, roll around in bed and, and watch your account value go up and down <laughs> by several hundreds of dollars in over a couple minutes. Oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down to give it a go. All right. So, uh, yeah. but what, what, what's the bet then? What's the bet? What do you mean? Or are we putting in for a pot? What are we doing? I don't know. I think we definitely need to have like a basic understanding of how it works for us first before we start putting money on the line. Plus we're just going to get rolled by people with more experience, surely. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> It'd be the one thing that I could beat you at, and it would be great. What do you mean? I, I mean, it would be the one thing that I could beat you at, and it would be great. Um, Did I stutter? I'm gonna die. Never mind. I'm gonna die. Never mind. Why? I'm what are you fall doing? I keep falling into the fire trap, man. Why is my shift key not working? There we go. There we go. Why don't you just... <laughs> <laughs> Take the stairs instead of oh, falling down. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can do a big brain play with this. Hold on. Get rid of all my shots except for the last one. And then pick this up. Hell yeah. I do the Just same don't press the one. R key. Alright, let's do it. <clears throat> My experience with Forex has been pretty bad. So when uh, <laughs> recently Justin was almost invited to join a pyramid scheme. Oh shit! And the the scheme was kind of revolving around Forex, right? If I remember right, it was a mix of like foreign exchange, high frequency trading, um, and and other nebulous shit that is not real. So t t tell us their pitch, right? Okay, so their pitch was basically, I don't know what I'm doing, but look at all this money I'm making. <laughs> oh, you should give us $375. So it, it, it's just they're they're all fucking full of it. And they're just saying, oh, wow, look at all this money that you too could be making. This man pulled the paycheck out of his ass. <laughs> it's like that's you can't fucking do that what really set me off was that there was a um a short i suck i suck tiktok i guess a tiktok like, back in my day i would call it a vine but um what the there's a man oh there's another man um there was a short video of a guy who's like i don't know what i'm doing had a little over a thousand dollars in this account and earlier this week and now it's friday and i have two thousand six hundred dollars and it's so easy and anyone can do it and i'm like you absolutely 100 percent cannot fucking do that shit no way no how you lying piece of shit so at a thousand dollars you do not have access to margin of any kind you do not have access to leverage you cannot sell anything you can't owe your broker shit hmm. And most brokers without $2,000 are not going to give you access to options because if you don't have 2000 bucks, they're going to be like, what the fuck are you going to do with an option? <laughs> You're going to lose your ass on it because you don't understand what it is. But they're trying to say that just by buying and selling like stupid shit that you could afford with a little under $1,000, they somehow were able to multiply their money. Like, no, absolutely not. There's no fucking way you did that shit. <laughs> and if you did, post your trades. You won't because you don't have any, but post your trades and we'll fucking see. That's the other thing that bothers me is that in every claim that they had, they were like, look at this money I made. Oh, look, I'm about to press a button. I'm going to make some more money. Oh, whoops, I mysteriously crashed. But oh, look, I've got more money than I had before. What? Cra yeah, it's like it's. Oh, I fucking, see. So things went wrong, so but he still made money. 
no, it's like, yeah, so his shit crashed, and then he's like, oh, I couldn't record it, so, but uh, oh, look, I've I got more money now than I have I see. before. Did that actually then, happen like, on, like, the Zoom call? No, but it's like it's manufactured. I they see. cut out. They stopped the video before they would be held to account for how their shit's wrong. Before That's they could crazy. get called out on it. I bet you if, just if Justin didn't have you come into the call and like tell him like, hey, this is a load of horse hockey, he probably would be in the pyramid scheme right now. He would have. Actually, that's probably he, not sure. He doesn't have the money to, to do it. To Justin's credit, he did have the money, but he sniffed it out on his own and said no. But well, didn't you? Weren't you in Discord when the Zoom presentation happened? Yeah, I was, happened? but I was, but he had already told the guy no before I was able to make it. Oh, I see. I see. So it was broken that carried him then. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting destroyed, man. Yeah, the thing that strikes me is that they say they make all this money, but they never show their trades. They just say, look at my account balance before, look at my account balance after. And it's like, bitch, I can make a deposit too. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh... So yeah, any so obviously this shit is not easy. It is not simple. Anyone that tries to tell you that it is is trying they're trying to fucking sell you something. Mm -hmm. And you need to be aware. That doesn't mean that you have to have a complex option strategy that involves hedging with futures though. You can just sell cover calls on a stock that you like. It doesn't have to be super complicated. But when you dig into it, it is. Am I making any sense? Yeah, 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 for sure. I, th I think it's gonna be a nice little gateway into uh, into the world of finance to do this like paper account, paper trading. Is that what it is? Uh, yes. Why paper is it called trading. paper trading? Because it's just it's on called paper? paper trading because uh, instead of buying things with dollar bills, you're buying it with paper. Gotcha. It's pretend. It's funny money. So all the market data is still real, actionable shit. But um, the dynamic between how your orders affect uh, bids and asks, you know, how other people are viewing this security, it like it doesn't. Right, right. Where he says like the self-fulfilling sort of thing. Yeah. So <clears throat> when you do paper trading, it's like if you set a limit order, so you're like, I'm only gonna buy or sell this. Fuck. Oh, we both died. Alvarez. I'm only going to buy or sell this thing at this specific price. If the bid ask spread lands somewhere between there and you could reasonably get your order routed and filled at that price, then your paper trader is just going to be like, yeah, okay, good enough. Here's your fill. Oh, I'm standing on fire. What do you mean, here's your fill? Uh, when an order is filled, that means it's fully executed and you have your shares. Okay, okay, I gotcha. Or your money, or whatever the fuck your order was about. Blazing hoop. Cool. Time to blow up barrels inadvertently. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. It's only got one weapon that I can actually use properly. I am not enjoying those lightning traps at all, by the way. There's a lot of traps in this game, huh? Yeah, it's it's almost like the main way to add difficulty to Gunfire Reborn is to just throw more shit. <laughs> more boulders. I don't mind it too much, though, because for what it is, there's only so much you can do. Make everyone Boulder Town. I used to think Boulder Town was so easy, and then I played Nightmare Mode, and the boulders moved a little faster, <laughs> and I couldn't do it. I actually didn't even oh, realize wait, actually, they faster. Actually, this is crazy because I get free fire and then I have lightning gloves, so I just make people confused. Hmm. You get free fire this... from that? Yeah, Blazing Hoop uh, inflicts fire damage to everything. Oh, I see. I see. Pretty regularly. And then I have lightning gloves, so I just use lightning glove. This is great. Actually, high tier. Maybe I'll make a channel in the Discord for about... What would you call it? Just finance? Just just put a dollar sign there. People <laughs> will know. Why is he looking at the ground? What are you doing? New age strategy. What's up, Calfrey? 
All right. Does anyone have questions? I, I don't know if anyone managed to keep up with, with Mr. Mr. Zhao. Yeah, I would I would very much like to answer questions. Actually, I'm going to backpedal again, and I'm just going to say for any of you guys that are thinking, man, that sounds great. I super want to try this too. You need to get some other shit in order first. Like, you need to have a budget. You need to have an emergency fund. You need to make sure that you're, you know, overall financial picture is relatively secure because you can't just be putting money into the market because it, investing does carry risk and not be able to su to sustain a loss well said this suck reroll what do we got what do we got tiger cannon magazine capacity explosion aoe eh. take that Trying to do the tiger cannon build. I thought about it, man. Minus AOE plus reload speed? No. That's no. a little hard to work No, with. no, 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 no. This is the tiger cannon. I have advanced depot. This is it. But I cannot. I've been scammed. Investing is for extra money when you can't invest to make your essential cash. Oh, you can't invest to make your essential cash. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me buy something so I don't have this. Oh, no. He's going back. I've dropped the wrong weapon. I must drop this for a moment. Uh, There we go. Ready to go. Oh, frick. Oh, by, it's boulder By load. the way, I'm just going to throw this out there. Also, not a financial professional. Consult a... <laughs> advisor just claim um, savings accounts are massive scams and if you have one you should literally just put your money into a uh commercial paper money market fund like fidelity will have them oh i got lily we'll get sniped if he does it again we're good we're good we're good unreal oh my god if uh, i right click i literally just shoot forever put your money into a commercial paper account of some kind and basically what commercial paper is, is it's uh, IOUs that companies issue to each other. And it's like overnight agreements. It's like, hey, I need 30 bucks to uh, avoid account fees for maintenance in my bank account. No, my leap is an iframe. That's fucking great. That's crazy. Okay, we, we melted so this commercial guy. paper often has relatively low returns, but it's it's basically cash. So if you put your money into a commercial paper uh, money market fund instead of a savings account, you will actually get a return that can be measured in more than tenths of a percent every year. <laughs> so you think savings accounts are just completely a scam then? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Huh. Interesting, interesting. I, d I don't see a point in them. If you need liquid cash, that's what your checking account is for. Right. Anything right. else, there's other accounts that can get you more, you know? Even Robinhood with their cash account. If you do fucking nothing, they'll give you 1.8%. There is no savings account in, in the uh, like a major bank that will do that for you. Do you think that everyone who has money lying around should have some sort of like investment whether it be something as small as just like putting it in what you just said yeah i i think that anyone that has uh additional money that they're hanging on to beyond what they would need for uh their emergency fund three to six months of expenses um i think they should consider that because as long as their money is not doing anything for them it's just losing value right right because due to inflation, your your idle cash just buys progressively less stuff. So I think it's a very good idea for people to engage other avenues of uh, cash management, even if it's you know just you know the Robinhood cash management account where they give you one point eight percent, or committing it to. Um, a cover call strategy to generate more than that. We still haven't really talked about exact return on investment, right? Oh, well, I mentioned it a few times, but oh. yeah. So, 
generally speaking, if you just if you have a buy and hold strategy and you just buy the S&P 500, you'll get probably about 15% a year and I'm dead. So how how long or you said your your strategy is diagonal spread? Yeah, diagonal spread. And that can go on about a year. It could go on less if you want it to. I see. Uh how long have you been doing it for? About 2 years now, 2 3 years. I see. Did you invest before that? A little bit, yeah. So I started out just by um, buying and holding odd lots, which is like two, three shares. Uh, and I remember the first investment I was proud of is I bought two shares of Microsoft at 60 and sold them at 85. <laughs> and I thought I was like, man, that's so good. But now it's like, you know, there's an option premium for like $100. And I just, you know, Starbucks at the money call, $120. Yeah, I'll take that. Thanks for the money, fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm reminded of uh, my my uncle with uh, the fifty dollar birthday present. Right. It's you want just, to tell a story? I'm, oh man! So back in like 2005, um, my dad's brother, my uncle, uh, was in California, and we visited them because we were on a vacation to uh, Disneyland. So um, we, we went over there and we visited with them a little bit before and after our uh, Disneyland stay. And we are probably going to die here. I'm at ammo. I'm at ammo on both weapons. <laughs> I've been slashed in the back. Oh, this is so bad. There's a man with a toxic weapon. I, I, think, I think we need to give up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe four men, we could do it. Yeah, but like that, the I elite the arson is like, he's so rude, you know? You just appeared? Yeah. <sighs> he just jumped down and started poison throwering me. So anyways, um, I visited them uh, when we landed and then uh, uh, the last day. And uh, for my birthday, and my brother's birthday too, um, we got cards and mine had $50 in it. And I'm like, holy shit, this is the most amount of money I have ever seen at once in my life because I grew up kind of poor. Um, at, so I was like, $50, like, holy shit, thank you so much. My dad just looks at me, winks and says, chump change. And I'm like, hold on a fucking second here. What do you mean? And then it's like, later I find out my uncle was loaded as fuck. He had like $800,000 that my aunt got after he died to leukemia and she fucking blew it all. And there's no money left now, but that's beside the point. It's like $50. That's a lot of food. That's, you know, like three new mice. <laughs> it's like $50 buys quite a bit of stuff. And it's like, that's chump change. It's fucking nothing. And now I'm in a position where it's like I'm seeing such big numbers in the markets that I can look back on that and understand what was meant. Yeah, $50, it's a lot to you and me. But in the context of the broader market, it's nothing. The amount of money that moves through financial markets every single day is unfathomable. You think that's what he meant? I do think that's what he meant. Really? Well, I don't think he meant to be that deep with it. I think he was just being like, it's chump change. My brother's loaded, but <laughs> huh. um, I, if, if I think about it that way, it sounds a lot more sage. So I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like the um, the scene from like Cinderella Man where the father, like they finally get some sort of hefty food. You know, he's cutting it up for his kids and then like he... Uh, he gives some extra to his children and says, like, I'm not hungry. I thought it was that kind of sort of a uh, sort of gesture. <laughs> no, unfortunately, not quite like that. Uh, no, my my uncle had quite a bit of money. He was he was a Microsoft investor, so I he, see. he made out pretty well. Um, didn't, didn't you say that like it kind of defined how you feel about spending money into the future and like how you planned out your goals? Yeah, so because i didn't grow up with a whole ton of money and we live pretty modestly um like chili mac was a very common dinner for us um i kind of developed this aversion to spending money especially when my dad started making some money like when he switched jobs at the um 
in two, about 2000, he spent one year like kind of learning how everything worked. And then from every year then on until he quit, he was the top salesman at that company. Wow. And it was so fucking crazy. He was making good, muck, good fucking money. But I saw all of these things that we were surrounding ourselves with. And I was just like, is there a point? What do you mean? Is why, why do we need this? It's nice. Yeah, oh, it's I cool. See. After you started making money, started buying things, and then you would still have that frugal mindset of like, we should be saving everything. Yeah, because I remember what it was like to, like the only thing we had to do was sit on the couch and watch TV. That was all the entertainment we had available to us. Mm. So, I mean, I still had that mindset and understanding the the consumerist nature of the u.s economy the way i do is kind of like i have a natural aversion to buying things anyways but that kind of just sort of those moments sort of solidified it where it's like you know my dad is buying all this stuff that we don't really need because he can but then it's like every day he still gets up and goes to work because he has to because he has to keep making money to buy shit he doesn't need hmm. so what is point i thought you worked so that you could retire but if you don't retire then what so now i'm just like okay fuck it i'm not spending any money i'm going to spend money only on what i need and then when i have enough money to just retire based on uh the money i have available to me to uh sell premium i'm done that's it i retire so you had a plan like going into uh like your educational career, right? Like uh, you're about very... sophomore year of college, yeah. I, I got this plan set. Which was? Well, originally it was, okay, I don't know a lot about finance, but I'm going to major in it because that's where all the money is. And I need to be where the money is so that I can understand, you know, how it is that um, it can be a major news story that – billions of dollars in retirement accounts have been wiped out and everyone goes about their day like nothing happened hmm. because this was also shortly after the financial crisis and you know retirement savings were decimated so i was like okay i need to figure this shit out and then um shortly after i graduated college i'm like okay i feel well equipped enough to make decisions as to how I should be handling my raw money. It's just the specifics of where it goes, I wasn't quite set on. So the first thing I did, which was like my priority one, is start accumulating assets. I bought a car. I looked at buying a house. I set savings up for an emergency fund. I paid off my debts as reasonably as I could. And then it's like I started learning about uh, options trading because it's like after I understood what there was to understand about investing and trading stock, it's like, okay, there's more out there. What's next? Options trading. And it's like, okay, there's a lot here. So I've taken a few years to understand that. And it's like there's a lot that can be done with this shit. So I'm going to focus on this. And if it, since it is possible for me to not have to work my whole life, to not have to rely on social security that I may not even have by the time I retire. This is probably the way I need to go. Because if nothing else, if I'm not spending all my time working for an employer, I just make a couple trades every month and I'm set. Then I have a lot of time that I can spend on other things like raising a family or doing good in the community or playing Gunfire Reborn with Pinguify. <laughs> So I guess like the, the retire early thing wasn't really like a long standing goal of mine. It's it's more of a recent thing as of about last year. But there has always been the idea in my head that I shouldn't have to work until I'm 70. There's a better way to do it. And I'm going to find that out. Hmm. And I think I did. That's really pretty interesting that like your entire path that you wanted to take was defined by your upbringing. Yeah, well, you know, trauma informative years. I think that's that's probably pretty common. I think about it, but you know, good on you, good on you, to have like such a well thought out plan that's like at a pretty young age of like setting these goals. I want a car, I want a house, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and just like working towards it with that goal in mind. Yeah, for context, 
I graduated college when I was 20. I'm 26 right now. Mm -hmm. Boomer of the community. I think like third oldest person. Yeah. I think I think Suen is older than you, and so is Goonski, but I think that's about it. <laughs> the Council of Elders. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but the nice thing is that because I'm a boomer, I can just, like, I can say anything that sounds, like, remotely wise, and people are like, oh, wow, May, so smart Oh, great, smart sage, wise. May. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, OK Commander guy. And Stork, I thought you already subscribed many moons ago, but I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a very, very strange stream. Honestly, it's, it's one that was mostly for like my own benefit because I was very curious about these um, these options that existed. Um, and and now I know. Now I know. Yeah. So I well, do... I think it's good. I think it's good for more people to be exposed to it because it is something accessible to everyone. Like right. anyone can go and open a brokerage account and deposit twenty dollars and buy some shitty stock that is nothing. But mm -hmm. you can get involved in personal finance and investing, and it doesn't take hardly anything. Right. Right. And right, so boys. because these things are available, I think it's important for people to understand what they are, what they can do and if they fit with their risk tolerance. I think for most people here, it will, because we're all pretty young, and you really would only want to start shifting into more conservative strategies that maybe don't utilize options when you have something that you need to protect, like a hmm. significant amount of money that's like, okay, I've got $500,000 and I'm 53 years old. I, I can't be leveraging all of this money and you know, risk it going away or getting eaten up in a margin call or something like that. Right. But for, for most of us, we still have a lot of money to, to earn in our lives through just working day jobs. So I think it's good to start looking at this stuff now and understanding what it is so that when the time comes and you have something to put away, you can start leveraging some of the same tools that rich people do to preserve their wealth. Hmm. Um, all right, boys, it's going to be the start of the finance channel. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do actually want to have that like paper account. Just try things out, see what happens without having to actually engender any or engage in any risk. Yeah. Um, There's a few different brokers you could use for it. Um, but I would I would just recommend Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade because it is so robust a platform. And if you can navigate and understand what you're doing on Thinkorswim, you can use literally any online brokerage platform. Okay. Um, do you have to be 18 to have a paper account? Technically, yes, but didn't stop Kunai. <laughs> I mean, there's you no. You do technically need to be 18 years old in order to have a brokerage account. Other than that, you would need to have a custodian open the account in your name and then transfer custody to you later when you turn 18. Interesting. But for paper trading, no one really cares. Right, right. Not a financial professional, by the way. <laughs> Consultant advisor, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, let me put I think a that'll be neat. Uh, It'll be a good learning experience for a lot of people. Hopefully, uh, people will get involved in the Discord and learn something. I hope to learn yeah. something. And even outside of investing, I would be more than happy to answer uh, any sort of decision-making questions that people have. Like, you know, I am making this amount of money. I'm living with my parents for free, but I have this amount of debt. I'm trying to save up for this. How should I go about managing my money? Mm. Free financial advice. Again, advisor. understanding, not a financial professional. <laughs> um... The advice is free. How much money would you say that you should have getting into investment? Like the, the 2K? So you can start I would doing say options? Two, I, I would say 2,000 is probably your best starting point. Somewhere between two and 5,000. Okay. So 2,000 is the minimum in order to be approved for a margin account. And that'll let you start selling premium. Um, but uh, if you have more, then you can take on more positions and diversify your risk better mm. so that any one position going wrong isn't going to just drop kick you out of the game right. entirely like if you started with four hundred dollars you could but if you're wrong once you're done 
Aim gods looks like not a steel. speaking from personal experience, by the way. Seriously, this happened. Yeah, so my mom, I was like, hey, I just get excited about shit and I start talking about things. And I was learning about options. And I'm like, hey, mom, there's all this stuff I've been learning about. And she's like, that's cool. And I, I was just like talking about like all the potential. And it's like, it's really cool. And she's like, do you want to have some money? See if you can do something with it. And I'm like, uh, wow. uh sure. So she gave me 400 bucks and I blew up the account in <laughs> February. I had an iron condor on Disney and it was uh it was about two dollar wide strikes, so my max loss was two hundred dollars and um yeah, so lost two hundred dollars there. And then uh I tried to do I I think it was a a put credit spread so i was counting on things coming back earlier than they actually did and i put that on on uh spy and and that blew up the rest of the account so oh my god the only thing that's left is the 35 dollar premium credit i receive between those two and it's like wow it fucking feels bad so you knew about iron condors but you still didn't know enough about like the markets to actually gain, gain a profit well, the problem is that the down move in February of this year, where like February 19th, this Wait, this was market. recent? Yes, this year, what? February 19th, 2020. I thought you were investing two years ago. Yeah, I have been, but I haven't blown up an account in, in that learning time because a lot of it was like paper trading and in small amounts. So the money that, that I got and then I subsequently lost was due to, uh, and it, you try to hire risk what is market? referred to as a three standard deviation move that only happens 0.5 percent or less of the time so you got so like lucky. yeah i i got <laughs> really fucking unlucky 0.5. <laughs> but here's the thing here's the thing is that in a small account like that you don't have the room to be wrong if you're wrong like bye try again later you're out you need to deposit more money in the account in order to keep going but my, my mom was cool with it because she's like, ah, it's a nice tax write-off, so thanks. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, I'm like, that can happen. Um, so you want to have a large enough account that you can take on a larger number of positions so that if one thing goes backwards, you're not just totally ruined. Okay. You can't have all your eggs so, in one basket. Yeah, two thousand minimum, five thousand would be a comfier start. Interesting. Well, boys, if you want to learn more about it, I mean, we might we might throw a finance channel up there. Have have Nick Stambol come back to the Discord, because uh, I, I strong arm Wookie to come back through the food channel. I'll do the same thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I don't know that I can really like be that active no, because fine. I do that's still fine. have a day job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, once in a while you'll show up on your phone during a lunch break or something. I'll I'll take a screenshot of my thirteen dollar loss for the day and be like <laughs> financial professional right here. Listen to me for your advice. Oh, man. So you were saying that I still need to get a degree to be a bank manager, even though I watch this banker stream. <laughs> so you're saying that I still need to get it. Well, I mean, it helps, but honestly, you could just start as a teller. And then if you're the last man standing, they'll have no choice but to promote you. <laughs> True. But yeah, I learned a lot. It, it was very difficult on my brain. Like everything that made sense until we got to options and like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, especially different when you have to think about stocks not as like i'm buying it and then i'm selling it but also as like i can sell it but then buy it later and still make money and then it's like okay all the in-between shit about how options affect your position is like man is this aim god's thing a one-day tourney i'm curious they dropped out 250k on the line they don't want to play that is nuts absolute disaster i mean based on the tweets that they were putting out i'm not that surprised can i can i read you some of the tweets nick symbol yes please do so there's a company called final mouse 
they are kind of like the innovators to the, the mouse with all, all the holes in them. Uh, uh-huh. But they did it really, really well. Problem is, they had like this ridiculous level of exclusivity around them. Like they would only have these really, really limited drops. And then they would also, um, I don't know, they just had some like really strange marketing. But yeah, they, they had always had this mystique of like, it's a really expensive mouse, hard to get your hands on. But like, some of the top mice reviews are saying like, yeah, I can't really recommend it because it's so expensive and hard to get your hands on, but I do aim the best with it. So, uh, they decided out of nowhere, out of nowhere, they said like, okay, we're making a game. We are making a, a esports title to, uh, you know, to get revive the FPS genre or something like that. Final Mouse is making a video game. They, a mouse company has decided to make a a, a video game. Um, okay. Let me, let me find some of the, the great tweets here. People think yeah, I'm that a little skeptical gods, right off the bat, honestly. Pe- people think that Aim Gods is some kind of aim trainer game are going to be in for a surprise. I made the greatest competitive game of all time, built on our own launcher. 300 billion different combinations of abilities. I made the chess of esports. Just wait until you K up. Totally unique. K- ga- what the? K up. They misspelled Q with only one U E. Okay. Totally unique gameplay. Never before seen. This is a new genre because I yeah, am a free thinker. False, though. <laughs> I'm a free thinker. One word. It's like some. All right. That's. That's. I'm a free thinker. It's like some Orwell shit. Oh no! This is so bad. Okay. Oh wait. Hold on. Everything out of my frontal lobe is a universe <laughs> shifting. It's pure. It's art. When Notch made Minecraft, he made art. It came from the depths of his soul. It was unlike anything else. Holy shit. Hello, Narcissus. <laughs> I love the free thinker as one word. It makes it so much <laughs> more Is awful. it capitalized as well? No, no, no. I think that would that oh, would have okay. been the nail on the coffin. He, he should have. That would have, like... There's small things that he could do. If he just threw in a few random capitalizations somewhere, at least you could just take it as be like, ha ha, how funny. What a joke. Great meme, guys. Oh, man. It's so I good, I think man. he actually believes this. Everyone get your homies together. You all need to be together right now. This is a magical experience <laughs> that you'll remember for the rest of your lives. Experience with those closest to you. The friends that make you laugh, make you feel when the good times are tough. And this is for watching their esports tournament. <laughs> okay, so when are we watching this esports tournament? I, I am going to watch it, yes. Okay, is that on right now? Uh, I think it is. I, I'm not going to raid them. I'm going to raid um, Phosphorescent, most likely. But I will be watching this shit show of attorney. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to warm up some dinner, start some laundry, and then I'm going to have to watch okay, it. Okay, yeah, we, we can go chill on Discord <laughs> and talk about this <laughs> shit. I mean, I don't know. We might, like, watch it and be like, oh my god, this is so terrible, and then, like, just not want to watch it anymore. I was, I'm not going to host Aim Gods. I can't Well, you know, that would still thinker. be a good time, honestly. Read more tweets? I don't know if there's any more that are, like, like completely off the rocker. This is about to be a Christmas you will never forget. <laughs> <laughs> For those that appreciate art, today is your day. You are about to witness an incredible display of talent. Do you feel the energy that I'm sending you right now? This is not just any oh, game or no. any mouse. <laughs> this is some like some cult shit. Dude, my cheeks hurt. Stop. It will take ten years to copy what we have created. Tomorrow you're going to witness the power of free thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I can Pretty safely say that, that this new mouse will resell for 2500 minimum. Anything less than that is a bargain. Oh my, oh my god. god. Becoming a pro aim gods player will rich you, make you richer than the Sultan of Agrabah. What is that? Aladdin? You ever seen Aladdin? Oh no, okay. I'm just I'm just uncultured. You've never seen I, I've Aladdin. I've seen Aladdin. Disney movie classic. Many moons ago. Holy shit. I'm so disappointed in you, Pinguify. Aim Gods is so addicting, it should be called Aim Crack. That's just a bad joke, uh, honestly. No, yeah. Final Mouse is forever. Through trends, bubbles, and everything in between. Because art never dies. Free thinking never dies. Be true in your voice and courageous under pressure. Are these guys still making mice, by the way? They did make Are a mice. Are people still buying mouse? their mice? I mean, they're pretty good. Like, that's the problem, is that they're they're somehow making good mice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, okay, but are are they good or are they just like better than average? They're better than for like what they are almost to be. all of the mice that exist. They've made a 37 gram wireless mouse. A Starlight 12 chassis composed of magnesium alloy, the lightest structural metal on Earth. Latency speeds faster than any wired slash wireless mouse in existence. Two months of battery life. Okay. If, that's big pretty, if true. Pretty impressive. Big if true. And, and they usually deliver on their mice promises, but like, goddamn. 37 grams? That's out of this world. You wouldn't even feel that. Sounds some real pretentious shit. When I when I was looking into like the Wim Hof method, there was like unlock your chakras and you'll feel the energy flow through you, and like that's obviously a load of horse hog. I'm getting a very very similar vibe coming from uh coming from these tweets. Yo, Motes, zero eight one five. I missed your raid six minutes ago. I, I appreciate it. Did I not get a notification? Am I actually yeah, I showed up in chat, but it got scrolled away pretty fast. I'm sorry. Also, I, I you were caught up in the Twitter, so uh, don't blame there. <laughs> I apologize. I, I do appreciate you. Uh, but I think that's that's basically it for, for the mouse stuff. You don't have stream... Yeah, I guess not. I could have sworn that I set those up, but maybe not. Adam Palm Hydrogen. I have not. Is that a mouse? That is a ridiculous name for a mouse. To Google. It looks like a final mouse clone. Not really. What is this? Adam Palm. Kind of like... It looks a bit like a... A razor viper at the front the way it kind of flares out who the hell are these people i've never heard of them before yeah i haven't either this is, looks pretty claw are those omron switches well, almost every mouse the japanese omron. omron switches yeah how do you know i literally went to adampalm.com <laughs> oh okay but how did you know it was omron switches but without actually it, seeing them before well i'm i'm familiar with how they're laid out Aluminum wheel. You got an aluminum mouse wheel, but why? 45 grams. That's nuts. Actually. I've never seen an anodizing like that before. Can you make this? It's like a wheel? copper what? anodized. I mean, this mouse looks pretty good. I won't lie. It looks like a, a claw mouse based on the hump size. Yeah, 45 which... grams. Pretty good. God dang. I mean, I think I'm an ergo slave for the rest of my life where are you seeing this i just looked it up i probably should put it on stream stream huh <laughs> like a real streamer but yeah, just kind of atompalm.com it literally is the first and only thing that they have okay uh but that was just kind of a strange aside before i uh ended stream thank you for watching if you've been sat through this economics lecture i will say that the only real complaint that i have for you may is that you you offer many levels of, of, of abstraction at the same time. Like it's a lot of information and a lot of jargon. I feel like- Yeah, and then it's hard to work through, I know. The more analogies like you throw at me, the more I'm like, okay, I understand what a food like food basket is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the hardest thing for me personally is that um, I've engaged with this stuff for so long that it's just like, it's it like just rules out of my mouth right, right. like some sort of word vomit and I don't even think about the things that other people are not familiar with. So That's fair. I mean, I, I asked sorry. you a lot of questions about like definitions and that definitely helped me. Um, I, I should have gone through more with like the mental gymnastics of like understanding it from like talking it through myself instead of just saying that I understood. <laughs> because as more things were introduced, I'm like, wait a minute, did I really understand or... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. No, you did get a lot of it for the most part. Thank you. You're a smarter boy than you think you are. I don't know about all that, but we did do our best here. Um, <clears throat> stream is indeed ending. I'm throwing some viewers to my boy Phosphorescent. He got absolutely destroyed in the recent dual turn here for Diabotical. So send him, some, send him some love. We'll raid him with Fs in his chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Think you're smart, LMAO. True. My brain literally does not activate once I open Diabolical. <laughs> Click egg. Yes. My frontal lobe. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is very much chained to the confines of this universe. Unlike the final mouse. How do you even let that guy handle PR? How is there no one at that company seeing the shit he's posting and been like, damn. Maybe we should not give him the credentials to post on here anymore. <laughs> well, it could very easily just be one dude and he just handles everything, you know? You think? 
a company that big? I wouldn't be big? surprised. There's a lot of very lean companies these days. Maybe. Maybe it's a good publicity stunt, to be honest. You know? Final stock is over. If you want to watch it from the start, like you can try. <laughs> it's an interesting way to get exposed to finance for sure. Um, but yeah, if you want to participate in like the practice investments with the paper trading accounts, uh, join the Discord. We'll be messing around with it. But yeah, let's go say hi to Foss. Okay, the stream has ended. Viewership. Is pretty, it time for dinner? Pretty, pretty, pretty good overall. Considering uh, the denseness of the topic, I'd say that's that's quite solid. Yeah, I, I probably could have done better with like more analogies and, and telling you to try and suss shit out more. But I, I mean, it's it's both of our, you know. There, there were a lot both. of bridges that needed People to be crossed, F and I wasn't chat. sure that you were gonna make the leaps. I'm not calling you dumb. I'm just saying it's a dense topic. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I definitely had trouble with like the iron. The ironclad stock, whatever, you know what I mean? The iron condor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, it's... The more legs you add to a strategy, the more shit you introduce to it, the more ridiculous crazy it gets. Not just from the setup, but in, like, what the price movement means for it. So it's like... Shit. You can't get much more complex than that, you know? That's it? That's the highest level of complexity is the iron condor? I mean, no, but I mean, the highest level of complexity would be um, using a, a leveraging strategy by buying a call, selling a put, same strike, same expiration to synthesize long shares uh, and then selling 100 shares against it and routing that order for a net credit to your account so that no matter what happens you gain a credit and then you roll that for continuous credits mm. that actually is very complex because you're dealing with a lot of leverage that basically amounts to nothing so, but you have to understand how these instruments work in order for that to actually bracket, like you know, be a good strategy for you just if, which one But I can talk about all of this stuff in the um, the finance channel that will never be coming. <laughs> I'm making it right now. No, please. Let's see. Here. Is it is it going to be under the um, skills, skills creative, or creative? Probably conversation. And I think we'll start okay. soon after the two people. I'm gonna have to make sure no I don't read that. Scream thing. said my name and he said Hudlet. Someone just said he saw. Spooky that. actually just uh, DM me asking how we would get into it as someone who doesn't know Simple. anything. So it's like, seven. there's already some engagement, which is pretty neat. Heck yeah. So, I chose symbol seven as my duo. For this but one. like I said, I think it's good for uh, everyone to be involved with this sort of stuff, just because it's like, you know, well, money's a little important. People need to be able to eat. And understanding how to optimize um, the way that you're spending your money is um, kind of important. All right. I, I, hope so. I go eat now. Thank you for. Okay. So weird when I'm like Help me out. It was a good stream. It was enjoyable. Yeah. D huh. DM me later when you watch the okay, um, okay. Yo, Saibu, you see this? whatever shitty tourney. Alrighty. Two. All right. Uh, Bye. You put him in here. Oh shit. <laughs>